I've got balls of steel. I've got I've balls, got balls of, steel. of steel. My jaw's hitting the ground. My jaw's hitting the ground.
All right, I'm early. I know I'm not going to get the same uh, people showing up at least right now that I would at like 8 o'clock. So hello, everybody, and welcome to whatever the fuck this is. My jaw's hitting the ground. I've got balls of steel. I think I'm going to have to chop that, too, and just get balls. Balls, balls, balls. So I was playing Elden Ring and watching Elden Ring videos. I restarted a few times to play around with some different characters and, and, and see. I, I actually do think the samurai fits my shit play style best. Uh, no, I'm actually going into the Papa Doodle Doo and Wash Your Balls. I gave you your Wash Your Balls. Thank you, Did I? We're going to watch Gamer from Mars. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. So I was doing that until like 3 o'clock in the morning last night. I'm actually liking the game quite a bit. I think it actually runs as far as I've seen so far. I mean, I would. it's not a solid 60, I know, but it runs pretty good on the Series S. I just decided for the hell of it to play it on my Series S, and it. I have no complaints I, for the system for what it is. I think it looks and runs pretty good. Um, can Carlos shit on my chest? Of course, absolutely. <laughs> Let's play Cold War. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, my anus is fully relaxed. I fixed the sound. Are all the sounds working on my soundboard right now? Yes, they are. I got them all fixed. Because there were some of them that I guess I had in a different folder that I deleted. No, I was not taking a dump, sadly. My jaw's hitting the ground. But my jaw's hitting the ground is back, too. What weren't now? Didn't I hear that the pat aren't the patents denied for something for the Amico, dude? How are you unboxing a system and the fucking patents are denied? I knew that was all smoke and mirrors anyway. I mean, I know they've had the shell of the hardware for ages. Every patent was de denied. Every patent was denied. And you have the balls to show that thing off. I, I can't. I, I can't. You couldn't make this up. You couldn't make it the fuck up. You know, and, and then they wonder why everyone. It's not that. And even with me, when it comes to gaming news, it's not that I like I said in the other. I think it was literally the last stream I said this, but it's so true. I'm not looking to be a negative fucking Nelly. I hate that term. It's a boomer term, but it's true. It's just that most of the news is shit. <laughs> most of it is bad news. Do you want me to spin what happened with GT7 into a happy story? You know, like, hey, but hey, it's great that they're, you know. Oh, man. Anyway. So, you're drunk and you love me. Well, according... <laughs> Google Fish apparently had it edible. Um, he was telling me about it before, and uh, he didn't realize it was. I don't know. Are you being truthful, Google Fish? That it was a 200 milligram gummy. The video is called. I know. I saw you put it up there. Berate me for liking the quartering's opinions. I'm not berating you for liking the quartering's opinions. Some of his like his opinion on G4. I agree with. When he, the initial video, anyway, the one that I watched. I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm not going to... It's not even about his fucking takes. I mean... Okay. Let me fully clarify that. He makes everything into anti-SJW stuff, even when there's no need for it to be. There's sometimes, rarely, that I do agree with him, like with G4. But... I, he's just a hypocrite. He doesn't practice what he preaches. So Google Fish, I don't know if you're here. <laughs> no, if, dude, if you took 200 milligrams, I don't even know how they dose cocaine. I've never had it, nor will I ever. Um, but he had a gummy. I know they exist. I'm not saying that he's lying either, but I'm like, dude, because uh, he said to me, he's like, oh, man, I forgot I had an edible. Now I'm on my ass. I'm like. Okay, like, how much, like, what did you have? Like, was it a dispensary one? Was it, you know, because edibles, it, oh, it was a gummy. It was a half a gummy. I'm like, yeah, that still means nothing. Because a gummy, if a gummy is 5 milligrams, you could just have 2.5 or it could be 200. 
Um, and then uh, he was like, oh, shit. I think he said his, I don't know, someone gave it to him. And he's like, oh, fuck it. I think I had 100 milligrams. Like, yeah, that'll fuck you up, dude. Well, people say, I don't even, dude, I don't even care. People say my videos are clickbait. Like, what it is is that he's, he is exactly what he says he, he swears to be against. That's my biggest issue with him. I don't give a shit. Like, you could agree with his takes. That's fine. I don't care. You know? Yeah, I'm fairly early tonight. I'm probably going to be playing some Elden Ring. See how I feel. See how the stream stream goes. Because I was up late last night. And I'm kind of like off. So. Buy $60 game. Doesn't play $60 game. Profit. Oh, I've done it, dude. I've done it. What is Jeremy's latest video on G4? A f they even make a 1500 milligram gummy? Is that even a thing or you're just fucking trolling right now? I don't even know they can make... Dude, that probably tastes like shit. There's no way, no matter what you make that gummy with, that you're hiding that high of a dosage in the flavor of it. No troll? Okay. Okay. That's like... Dude, when you bite into that, you're probably just tasting pure THC oil. I literally took 500 milligrams. Dude, you're probably on another different planet. So, Googlefish, if you're watching, that's why you're fucked up, dude. If you actually took, you think, 100 milligrams, I'm sure you were fucked tar 500. Oh, I'm sure it tastes disgusting. There's no way you could hide that high of a dosage under it, no matter how much sugar or whatever flavoring you put in there. DSP let you, Google Fish hangs around the review tech community season. Yeah, you know, I, I'm always full of shit too, so there you go. <laughs> so. Oh, I'm sure it tastes disgusting. Kind of like when I had that spicy gummy. I don't know if it had ghost pepper or whatever in it. They tried, but all it, it tasted like I put sugar in Tabasco. <laughs> or not even. Tabasco actually had a much better flavor, which I actually like the flavor of Tabasco. Why am I saying it like that? But there's no way with that much heat, with that much of one kind of thing inside of it, whether it be a ghost pepper or fucking marijuana or THC oil, you're not hiding it. There's nothing you could do. It's going to taste like shit. Just be prepared for the trip. Dude, I felt stoned off of that guy. It wasn't even marijuana. It was, I think I said ghost peppers were in there. I have a friend who does wax. I don't, I was like, nah, man. He's like, dude, you'll be on your ass. I'm like, I don't want to be on my ass. Yeah. Was it 500 milligrams or was it? No, I think the, yeah, you're right. They cut it down. He used to, and he he would just pop them like they were fucking Pringles. Joey Diaz, he had these are five hundred mill fucking milligrams. You beat Joe, oh, Joe Rogan, and he had like he was just popping them like he was having like fucking peanuts. I'm like Jesus Christ, dude, how high is your tolerance? It's another reason why, not only have I somewhat cut back on marijuana, but I was reading uh, and seeing that. Like, if you get marijuana on the streets, which I didn't do at all, um, they're lacing it with fentanyl now. Yeah, no, thank you. I, I, I'll, I'll take my marijuana without a side of death. I appreciate that. What's going on, Lord Zero? See my... Um, no, I haven't. I'm not, I'm not even engaging with the man. I said my piece. Taylor Hawkins. Who is Taylor Hawkins? Is that the guy from... The, is that the drummer? I don't know. I haven't... I honestly can't give a take on that, Beal. I haven't watched... Um, occasionally, his videos about DSP pop up. 
Yeah, the drummer from the Foo Fighters. What, 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 do they know what happened to him? It's like so sad what happened with Bob Saget. He had just ended up, I get, they think he may have fell in the bathtub and banged his head. Shit, man. I've, I've been getting my stuff from the same dispensary. See, I have a medical dispensary, so I think they're held up to, I'm not worried about it because I think they're held up to a higher standard in New York State, and I've been getting the same shit now for almost two years. So, you know, and I get the same stuff too. I just took, I took, just took three lozenges. They're only five milligrams each. So I, I have to, I don't know if Google fish is here, but I, I, I need to, well, I'll never work my way up to a hundred. Do Google fish. You always have, if you actually took a hundred, you always have to check the dosage first. I don't care if it's from your sister. I don't care if it's from as a dispensary. Look at the look at the bottle. Look at what it is, because especially if you don't touch the stuff and you go into it, you're gonna knock yourself on your ass, man. I ain't growing my own. I'm not sitting there becoming a fucking weed farmer. <laughs> ah, Banshee, I can relate. Yeah, I broke not I know I'm shocked. I actually broke nine hundred eighty nine thousand subscribers. I was actually because I saw I was like, oh wow, I actually checked my numbers, which I really don't actually check my subscriber count that much, which is probably not good. But I was like, oh shit, I'm actually at nine hundred and ninety. And I'm like, ah, let me what I'm uploading a video about Nint calling out Nintendo today. Let's uh let's see how long that lasts. And that's what happens, man. You know, then I checked, I told you a while back, I do check that. Like each video, it lets you see how many subs you get from a video. Some videos I'm getting 60 subs, 100 subs from a video. It's not that I'm not getting new subscribers, but then I have something where it's not a take that people like. And then, oh, you lost 200 subs at this video. Goodbye. Like, what am I, you know what I mean? So new people come in and I'm, it's not even me speculating. The numbers are showing me. New people come in, old people go out. I don't know what this is, but I'm going with it. <laughs> and, you know, th what are you going to do? That's how it is. I'm not going to change my takes on things to just make people happy. Then that just makes me like everybody else, you know, or people who do that because not everyone does that, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm, of course you're still high. If you actually had 100 milligrams, Google Fish, you're on your fucking ass. <laughs> you are absolutely on your ass, dude. I'm still high. I had a vision of you going up my ass in my dreams. That's a... That's a... We'll, we'll just put some... Richard in my ass, the movie. Richard, please, Richard, shove your head up my ass. <laughs> Oh, dude, you're going to be... If you actually had 100 again, you're going to... 100 is weak, then Jesus Christ, Barack America. Barack America! Um, You're going to be high for a while. Probably, when did you take it? You'll probably be high till about like 2 a.m., just letting you know now. Are the birds getting... No, I only had 15 milligrams. I just had it, too. The whole day, I was fucking dead sober, man. I didn't, What did I do today? I, um... I set up that racing chair. Ryan Henderson, thank you for becoming a member. Let me see where the members are at. Let me see where the members are at. Um, Like I said, I was up all night playing and watching videos on Elden Ring. I didn't get far because I kept on restarting because I was just trying different shit out. Um, so let me see here. YouTube Studio. You go to monetization. 331. Nice, man. Thank you, Ryan Henderson, for becoming a member. Um, I started, like, I tried different uh, characters to start with. I actually, you guys were right. I should have just listened to you. The Samurai is my favorite so far. Um, one thing I like is I got a little bit better at the controls too. Like it was just kind of fun and like learning, like there's some, honestly, I, I'm, I'm going to cheese. I'll just admit it. So I looked up some videos, how to get a little overpowered in the beginning and I'll probably go through, I'm going to have the videos on my tablet, 
my tablet. What am I, a grandma? My iPad. Yes, I am a grandma, birds. My jaw's hitting the ground. I've got balls of steel. Uh, no, we cannot watch Chris Chan have intercourse with a blow-up doll. This is a family-friendly channel deal. I've got balls of steel. Balls, 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 balls. I love the ventrilo harassment. Um... We could get a... Oh, Philium. We could actually do something better here. You win. Perfect. Um, Did you get my message, Sean McCarthy? Did you get my message? Pretty much any of those drives I said you'll be fine with. I'm starting... I may have to make a video on this so people could make more Rich of Tomorrow memes and they'll be right. I'm actually starting to like Sony's take on adding storage better because there's way more options with way bigger storage. What is what is Microsoft offering like two terabytes now for 2022 games? <laughs> two terabytes is like average. Average. You know, it's nice to have in that navy blue PS5 I have where I put those no name. I still like those side plates, by the way. Um, you responded. I didn't check. I didn't see. Um, it's nice to have a lot more speedy storage inside the system. So I know, but I know if I make that, oh, look, Rich tomorrow. Yeah. Like, yeah, because I, because I have experiences and my thoughts change. I'm sorry. <laughs> like my take on Elden Ring. You know what? I think my take on the Souls games, because I've played enough to have a valid take on those, would probably. Because here's the thing about a Souls game: once you're at a, it's a linear game. So once you're at a boss, you're at the fucking boss. You got to keep fighting him and keep dying until you figure it out. At least with Elden Ring, it's like, oh, this boss just fisted me with by swinging whatever, the, whatever the fuck he was holding once. Let me go farm a little bit and upgrade my abilities a little bit, and then you could go back. You know, oh, rich tomorrow is never going away. Cause that's another thing, and I'm not looking to make it like I'm some noble. I'm a, I could be a dick too. I always say that all the time, but I still, I have the humility to admit, like, oh, I had this take three years ago, but times have changed, and my take has changed. Like with backwards compatibility, people actually hold that against me. Like, what do you want me to do? Just pretend I still feel the same way because you want someone you watch never to be wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. Yeah. Some people actually do want that though. They want you to be like this fearless leader. Um. So did you hear about now, Apple's new monitor? They don't have a removable power plug. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Uh, That's what you pay extra money for. Like cheaper, no-name brand TVs have the non-removable power plug. Oh, wow. Wow. Apple, what the fuck are you doing, man? Intro guide, rich as farts, plus rapid DSP at the same time. Holy shit. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm going to give people seven seconds. Earplug, I don't know if you have earbuds in, AirPods, whatever the hell you have. It's going to get loud. So what do you want again? You want intro guy farts, you want my farts, and you want rapid DSP snorts. Holy shit, you're a fucking masochist. <laughs> Try to relax your anus. Watching this through my desktop and my Switch OLED at the same time using Starlink. No performance issues whatsoever. Stop it. That's fucking cool, man. Um, yeah, the Get That Gamer. 
Who am I? Who, now, someone said I missed a super chat here. Did I see? You need to thousand and stream it. What the hell are you talking about? Do a thousand milligrams? No, I don't feel like going to the hospital. Thank you. I fell down a hole. I I'm fell sorry. down a fucking hole. I fell hit. down, I a, fell down hit. a fucking hole. Hit. hole. I take about 10, 20 milligrams, depending on my anxiety and short fuse. I could relate to that. Rest in peace, Trip Hawkins. Yeah, Neil, you're right. I did miss quite a bit of Super Chats. Holy fuck. I got on a story. That's why. I always, I always notice that happens when I go on like a rant. Um, Google's face is telling me to enter the odyssey known as his ass, which is... That's normal. Enter the odyssey of my fucking ass, you hairy Italian who fucking calls mar marinara gravy because he is Italian of the garlic people. No, that's a like a tri-state New York thing, like Westchester too, as well. Like even Italians get pissed off that like New York City Italians call it gravy and not sauce. I just my family always called it that gravy. You know, on both sides, I think too it was never sauce, never sauce. So it's like, what are you talking? Like. That's just how I grew up. Like, listen, man, it's, I don't give a fuck. You could call it horse piss. If it tastes good on pizza, I'll eat it. My jaw's hitting the ground. Yeah, who got timed out? Who got timed out here? Alpha boy, skilled rook. What is it? Yeah, Bluntmore. Who timed you out? You didn't say anything wrong. Yes, Eldon, yeah. I may actually start again because then it, I'm so, I don't know, like I'm becoming unhealthfully obsessed. I've been watching videos of playthroughs. I think the thing that's selling me on Elden Ring that didn't sell me on other Souls games, and usually I'm not a big open world guy, is that it's open world because it's more forgiving because it's an open world. Oh man, I'm sounding like everyone who's a, a fanboy now. Fuck. Quantum TV was right. I, he's right. He's not. I'm kidding. Jesus Christ. I have not watched the new Halo TV series yet. Like I said, I was up until like 3, 3.30 in the morning. I did it in the beginning. Then I played it because my editor is like, hey, we should do a video on it because I know you think it should have an easy mode and I don't agree. And here's another Rich of Tomorrow meme. I'm kind of agreeing with him that I know that I no longer agree with my old self that it should have an easy mode. I don't think it should anymore. Look here. Look, listen. Try to relax your anus. And I think I'm also like, it's obviously not a solid 60, but I'm actually really impressed with how the game performs and runs on the Series S. I know it has issues. Like, and it doesn't, no, it doesn't stay at a solid 60, but it, that box is fucking ridiculous for the price, man. Again, I still hold to my concerns. That's one thing I do hold to. Like, when initially I talked about it, like, to get to 120p during multiplayer for Gears of War 5, you really got to go down to 720p in 2022, but okay. Okay. But then I see stuff like that, and I'm like, ah. Oh. Uh, Mexicali Blue is great extended play. I recommend it. You should eat there. I've got balls of steel. Balls of steel. Oh. All right, I got to stop. Now I'm actually... See, that's the shit I don't agree with. Yes, EDP is a fucking monster, and I, he unfortunately he's getting mostly what he deserves okay like getting kicked off the platforms like what do you expect dude you, you literally attempted to rape a 13 year old girl that's it it's over like your life as you know it is dumb but the vigilante shit the the doxing and the stuff like that it just it, stay away from it so yeah i'm kind of catching the souls bug do i think i'll complete i have no idea if i'll complete it knowing me Maybe, because I just still feel, even Elden Ring, like I feel like this this is what Castlevania should have become. And Konami, shockingly, totally dropped the ball on it. Oh, wow. Konami dropping the ball? I am shocked. So, Eric, I have not watched it yet. Jay Dizzle, thank you for the wiener. Oh, oh come on. Did you see that new Halo show I give seven? I didn't see... I did not see the show. I did not watch the second part of the Chris Chan documentary. Um, 
and uh, we may watch it tonight. How long is it? It's only 7.30, though. I got to stake my Cardano tomorrow, too. That's not a secret. I have Cardano. Um, I also, I'm keeping it on an exchange because I have the insurance policy on it. Uh, you can now stake Cardano on uh, uh, the exchange I'm on. You know, I would love to see From Software make a 3D Castlevania game. I think they'd be perfect for it. Now, people argue, Rich, just make your character look like a Belmont. And there you go. You have it. I hear you, but I think there's other things. They, they can make it a little bit more approachable still. And there's other things they could add a different flair to it and make it more auth authentic to the Castlevania IP. Lamont of Innocence wasn't... Lamont of Innocence, a lot of people praise it more than I... Th I feel like it kind of got repetitive. You know? That, that's just me, though. I'm a man with a beard. Yeah, no, I know kids... Yeah, like, my kids don't care. My, I'm going to probably, because their Xbox is dying, and my five- and four-year-old, they play... Uh, they play some Fortnite. No mics. And uh, Minecraft and my... Four-year-old has a weird obsession with Goat Simulator. They were, they were here with me yesterday, and they were and they were they they put the Goat Simulator theme on Alexa. That's on Alexa. Hey Alexa, play the Goat Simulator theme, and it started playing it. And they were pretending to be goats. I that happened. That was a thing. So I think I'm going to give them a Series S because their Xbox One is dying. Um, so I'm going to get them one. It is, honestly, Goat Sim... I hate to say it. Like, if you want a game where you just want to, like, put your brain on standby and just, like, relax and just have, like, a physics base where you could just kind of do... It's like a playground with a goat. It's actually still kind of a good... For, uh, kind of fun. You know? Wait, I thought someone messaged me about that before. You could still get a Series X at Walmart? Shut the fuck up. Are you serious? You need to watch the playlist I sent. Also, please watch Ed, Ed, and Eddie. It's still worth it, even if you're... I can't watch it. That would get copyright struck. Not struck, but I would get a claim right away in the stream. We'd get blocked everywhere. Let me look at Walmart, though. You, I think... you Did you message me on Twitter about that, dude? Or did someone else... Yeah, I mean, my daughter. Get, I mean, even the, when it, because well, she's two, but still, though, she's not. She's just like she wants to like pretend to go food shopping and stuff like that. She's like a little girl. Like she's like, yeah, okay, let the let the boys be dumbasses and play Goat Simulator. Um, so you maybe your daughter may not be as into it, but yeah, it's funny watching them like have arguments over goats too. Like it, they take it very seriously. <laughs> Right, let's see here. Why is it so expensive, though? Available. All right, we got Xbox. Now you could get it with Xbox All Access. Maybe it's this. Is it in stock? Yeah. You could get it with all access. So that's, I think, the asterisk to it. All access means you have to sign up for, I believe, two years of Game Pass. Yeah, the resellers are fucking clowns. How are you even going to dare resell it right now? Uh, chances are, if you want a Series X especially, you're probably going to sign up for Game Pass. Can it in-store... Is there any way I want to do it without just Walmart? Who I just want to see what Walmart's offering, not these fucking idiots. Uh, um. Oh joy, they have a skin and an extra controller. You can get it for eight hundred and thirty dollars. That's a, that's a go fuck yourself. Oh look, a thousand dollars for the Halo Infinite one. <laughs> 
All right, hey, you know what? So technically it is. And I would say that if you buy if you get actually they're offering the Series S up front for two ninety five. So it's actually five that's a typical Walmart. I would say four ninety nine here. And then you sign up for two especially if you're getting an S, you know, get it get game pass. You're gonna get it anyway. That's actually a good deal. I know Microsoft's starting to do a better job with Sony with stock replenishment from what I've seen anyway. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But uh, I know a lot of people, Darby, want me to watch. I get this uh, Series S with the X screen. I asked for a review unit. Eventually, they, they said they'll send me one. Um, if you live in Georgia or Florida, check out Brand Smart USA. I saw multiple sex, Xbox Series sex. The other day, I like calling it sex when you say the S and X because it technically sucks. All right. Yeah, so fuck it. We'll watch some Gamer from Mars. Why not? Gamer from Uranus. I <laughs> have a thumbnail. They called him gay. Family together. I guess it's a, I guess it'll get people watching. All right, so let's see. He actually says there's mo more parts of this too. So let me uh, turn on the screen capture. It is not turning on. Why? Oh, because game capture's on. Oops, that's why. The Chris Chan conspiracy. Uh, the the pre-existing game is it's it's the same game. Can you hear it? But yeah, essentially we got a, we're playing a star card in the center. We're gonna I'm gonna play my house. It's, the star card <laughs> is essentially the author or centerpiece of the whole fan fiction. Twilight Spark was the Christian is Equestria's most prolific and horrific fanfic author. She ships herself, her friends, and her family to. It's crazy that Chris Chan, Chris Chan still wears the Sonichu, huh? But I guess that's what made them famous, so sure. Yeah, regardless of relation, orientation, or harmonious main. I haven't bought a disc for any of the consoles, uh, whether it be PC. So I haven't bought a physical copy of... I can't even remember. So... Not having a disc drive doesn't really mean shit to me. And let's keep it real. Even if you buy the disc, you still have to download... <laughs> anyway. ...in a coat color combination. In order to help fulfill Twilight's dream of writing the perfect fanfics, you take turns at spanning the shipping grid, joining new ponies with ship cards. If you are the first to make one of Twilight's narrative goals a reality, you earn the points for that goal. Of course, you also earn the shame of enabling Twilight's horrible penchant of shipping of friends, but nobody's perfect. <laughs> goals that we want to achieve on the shipping grid which in this case we start off with fulfilling a prophecy we ship uh any sign you with the prime keyword with uh, chris chan or christine chan we get that or we get three unicorn sh ships on the gr unicorn on unicorn ships so that yeah that room still got a bunch of shit all over it though that's you know um, they're my daddy what kind of uh animal so, he's a side shoe. You know, then each player gets. He made a card of his deceased dad in it, like a playing card game. It's weird. Hmm. It's kind of dark in a strange way, huh? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that is the marijuana kicking in. It's kind of sad. Four ponies and three ships. That's their starting hand. Each player plays at least one card from your hand at the end of the turn. All pony cards closely shipped, as in, you know, attached with the ship you card. You can add a keyword they cannot to... Be <laughs> Everyone's saying it's weird, like the dude from G4. Swap either moved from card the grid by card cards effects. attached to. And, and all bring... pony cards shipped with it's that one cannot be discarded on the grid. Uh, also... I know Art right now is... I know what he's thinking. He's just like, what the fuck is even going on? Like, man, you entered that house, it's like entering, like, a different fucking planet. Oh, 
Yeah, I told you it gets crazy. Yeah. What the hell? Was... Using his Sonic Chu character, which he created in high school, Chris began to expand his fictional world, added new characters, and got to work making a comic to tell their stories. And in I will March what is... of 2000, I will thank you, Father. Five, Wait, Sonic Chu number zero. Go out, go, Sonic Chu. Go out and zap to the extreme. I will thank you, Father. <laughs> oh my God. Try to relax your anus. Bro was released onto Chris's website with the now iconic cover of Christian telling his creation to go out and zap to the extreme. It also boasted that the publication was hand-drawn, a fact that Chris clearly took great pride in. This is because while most webcomics are drawn digitally using a tablet, Chris did not have access to that sort of equipment, forcing him to draw on printer paper with pencils and markers. The art in Sonic Chew was crude and amateurish, which of- <laughs> No shit. Oh, hey, I hit the music. course became one of its most defining features over time. On top of that, there were frequent spelling and grammatical errors, another staple of his work. Sonic Chu did not tell one story per <laughs> staple of his work, meaning he's he was lazy. Issue. Instead, each installment was broken up into several Why smaller checking? tales, referred to as episodes. Episode one titled I can't listen to Sonic sounds Chu's now. I don't Origin trust you. explained how how the titular character came to be. As the story went, while fighting the monster Perfect Chaos, Sonic the Hedgehog collided with a nearby Pikachu that was watching the battle, transforming it into Sonic Chew. Meanwhile, a beam of rainbow en- What? What the fuck? Energy hit a Riot Chew 15 miles away, causing it to evolve into a new form. The Riot Chew's trainer, a girl named Kel, stated- Oh my, you're as beautiful as a rose! That her Pokemon looked as beautiful as a rose, leading her to choose the name Rose Chew. <sighs> this episode was... Oh, this is gonna be great. One of the earliest examples of Chris's poor understanding of copyright law. This... I... I've seen this part. It gets weird. Oh, I, I've already noticed. Despite him having created the Sonic Chew character to claim parody, he still tied his backstory in with intellectual property that he did not own. However, this did not stop Chris from putting his own copyright notice on the comic. At the end of episode one, Chris took readers on a small tour through his fiction. Oh wow, he must have studied copyright while growing up with Quantum TV. Since they both don't know fuck all about it. Yeah, you have the right to spin off. You know, but you can't make money off of it. It's Sonic the Hedgehog, except yellow. I mean, I understand trying to explain that to Chris. It just wouldn't click anyway. But yeah, you have the legal right to make it, and you you could like, but you don't have a right to monetize that. <sighs> I don't understand much of what's going on here. It's like a different. That's what, and dude, right now, and and the. The lozenges I just had just kicked in, so we are going on fucking crazy time. Can I taste your nuts? That is back as well. Try to relax your anus. Quickville, of which he was the mayor, and introduced them to the cast of characters they would be meeting in future issues. At I'll the check very your end messages of this section, later, Google Chris please. introduced himself, where he included the uniquely Chris Chan line, I am also single, lonely, and I need a girlfriend. A That'll just get the women. Hey, here's my imaginary character that's a blatant ripoff of Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, is there any women out there that want to have sex with me? Please let me know. Yo, put that on a dating profile. 
and just watch the women come just pouring in. They're going to just, titties are going to be all over your face. I'm lonely, singled, and fr sexually frustrated. Ladies, oh, look at them all lining up. I'm amazed. Episode 2 was an adaptation of Chris's old story, A Genesis of the Love Hogs, telling the tale of Sonic Chu and Rose Chu meeting each other and falling in love. Episode That's pretty much an across-the-board thing. Let's just keep it real. Uh, it doesn't matter your sexual preference or gender. If you seem really thirsty, it creeps people out. That's, I, I think... That's kind of, you, you don't even, I'm not Casanova by any means in case you haven't noticed, but you, you don't need to be one to realize, yeah, don't seem very thirsty. So three was titled Sonic Chew vs. Nate Sirk and introduced a new villain for the story, which is Christian's name spelled backwards. So he was the son of Giovanni, the leader of Team Rocket from Pokemon. Chris portrayed Nate Sirk as being what he felt was the complete opposite of himself. I may need more weed for this. I didn't realize this shit was going to get this crazy. You were right. Who said that to me before? This does get weird. Uh. Evil and flamboyantly gay. The epilogue of this first issue shows Chris lamenting over the continued failure of his love quest and driving back to the Fashion Square Mall to continue his search for a sweetheart. Strangely, in this encounter, Sonic Chu referred to Chris as his father. Chris also provided the readers with a few short Sonic Chu strips he had drawn before be Oh, you know, especially with how creepy Chris Chan got. You like he's literally filmed himself humping a doll. You know he had a boner while writing this, and this was some like kind of fetish shit with him. You don't have to be Dr. Phil to know come on. He was probably stroking his cock while drawing. Superstar DC, I don't know why I read that in Filthy Frank's voice. Watch this is giving me cancer. I don't even know if I really sounded like him, but it, in my mind's eye it did because I'm now I am stoned. Beginning work on the comic proper. These really didn't amount to anything important, but they are notable for... I know he eats his own... Mm. Yep, Anthony, Opie and Anthony did a skit on that before. Being the first appearance of a new villain known as Mary Lee Walsh, who you might... I'd love for Chris Chan for them to sit down with Dr. Phil. I bet you that's going to come in the future. I'm not even being funny. Might remember as the Dean of Student Affairs at Piedmont, Virginia Community College. The fictional Mary Lee Walsh's goal was to keep Chris from completing his love quest, mirroring how her real life counterpart. And she succeeded. <laughs> uh, you know what? Now that we know how this story ended, I it isn't really funny thinking about it. It's actually. But, oh, man, it's still disgusting how people think that the. Yeah, what he what Chris Chan did was I like it, it literally makes my stomach like I feel nauseous thinking about it. But the manipulation, like, why would you. She constructed Chris Chan for them to do all this. It's really sadistic and sick. It is a sad story. It's worse than I ever, like, I knew it was not going to end well for Chris Chan. It, it, Blackbuster critics said the same thing. But, no, like, this is, like, what happened in the end was beyond. Parch repeatedly Anything. forbade Chris from carrying his attraction sign around the campus, portraying her with a pitchfork and devil horns and ending the comic by obliterating her with his Chris Ye Hameha attack. As you can probably already- The what it Chris Ye Hameha? Oh man, I may need to go get more weed for this. <laughs> oh God, what is Chris Ye Hameha? What is that? 
already tell, Chris often incorporated his real-life struggles into his work. Another example being Jerk Cop Tastrophe, which involved him hanging around the mall, listening to music on his Nintendo DS, and expressing his frustration over the fact that all the women he wanted to date were already in relationships. Bro, he probably really did this too, Chris Chan at the time. <laughs> he was sitting there with like a Nintendo DS light with like Radio Shack headphones on, which those actually sound quite good. I'm going to actually order some more pairs of them going like, why aren't women dating me? I just have a, <laughs> a Sonichu pendant pendant around my neck listening to music on my fucking Nintendo DS. Oh, God. Oh, show so oh Jesus Christ. No, I think he would. He'd want to get into Chris Chan's head. He's had a kid that the parents were afraid that the kid was going to be a pedophile. He's had some crazy shit on there. As he pondered his unfortunate reality, Chris was approached by a jerk op who berated him for his loneliness. The security guard then brought in reinforcement to him. You know, it's kind of creepy, though, if you watch this. It, it's like telling of things that he actually did. It was almost like it was a precursor to knowing what Chris Chan truly was. Handcuff him, but our hero was able to escape by transforming into his new form known as Chris Chan Sonic Chu using his famous medallion. This appears to be the first ever use of his now famous moniker, Chris Chan. As Mr. Chandler began writing 150 hours? Ah, whatever. You know what, man? It just, I'm just going to enjoy the experience when I finish. If I, if and when I finish, I'll, just, I'll really go back to it. It's just great. The world is engrossing. Reading his comic, so too did he continue his love quest at the Fashion Square Mall. Now under the supervision of his parents following prior confrontations with the jerk ops, he would spend hours pacing around carrying his attraction sign. <laughs> but the thing is, this isn't just a comic. He really did this stuff. He thought this was going to work. This is... He thought this was going to... I... Yeah, let me tell you something. Well, actually, women like women can women a woman could walk into let's just keep it real. A woman could walk into a bar even if they're not like even if they're like a six point two out of ten, even a little lower, and just say I want to have sex. They will. They will. This, a dude will. They will proceed to get a dude. Um, if. Chris Chan especially at the time walked into the bar I'm lonely and I want to have sex he'd probably get arrested <laughs> yo you could be Brad Pitt, and Brad Pitt I sounded like Dr. Steve Brule there Brad Pitt you could be Brad Pitt in his prime and you you can't do that as a dude it's yes there is a double standard with that just deal with it if you think I'm sexist for that eat my ass hoping a girl would approach him that's Eventually, Chris did attract the attention of women, though probably like even an average looking woman walking around with the sign. I'm lonely and, and want a dude. They could walk around 10 minutes walking around the mall at most. They would they would they would have a penis almost of their choosing. Or a vagina, whatever floats your boat. You get my point, though. They extended play. They could walk into Mexicali blue, just show a little cleavage. They could look mad. The next thing you know, they could get whatever, whatever they want. A dude does. A dude walks in, going, "Hey, I'm lonely. I want to go. I want to meet somebody." Yeah, get out. It's just how it is. It's just how it is. Don't tell me it's not, man. And I know that that there are people that are very left that get pissed off when I say that. Why? That's reality. That's really what happens. I should do. I should make like a YouTube video on that, but we can't do those social experiments anymore. That's a no, no. Probably not the kind of attention he was hoping for. 
The first of these ladies was a 19-year-old named Anna McLaren, who detailed her experience with Chris in a blog post titled, The Tale of the Crazy Pacer. According to her, she would often see a 20-some-year-old autistic man making his rounds while she was at work, and he would occasionally glance through the window of the store to look at her along with... Oh, no, that's... Oh, no. Oh. No. Hello, female employees. On a dare, Anna began to wave at Chris as he walked by, which quickly escalated when... <laughs> and that was a mistake on her part. And Chris was probably like... Like, as soon as he saw the wave, he probably was like that guy. The, who is that superhero who was from a living color? Uh, every time, like, a woman's even talked to him, he would nut his pants. Chris was like, ah! Ah! I've got balls of steel. I forgot who the, it was one of the Wayans brothers that played that character. And like, he was so desperate for like any time blank man, blank man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, Chris, Ch he just busted a nut as soon as she was waving. You know that. <laughs> Come on. And he entered the store to talk to her. He attempted to flirt and she responded as politely as she could before the conversation ended with Chris giving Anna his email address. Despite the circumstances, his email address? Oh, that'll even go even better. Hi, I'm Desperate walking around with a sign, probably really actually listening to DS music with a pair of wired headphones on, wearing a Sonichu pendant. <laughs> oh, I don't have a cell phone. Just email we. We could go out and get dinner. Yeah. Oh. I am going to need more weed. I don't know if I of how they met, the teenager would go on to become one of Chris's longest running real life acquaintances after this encounter. The second of Chris's it was blank man, quest you're right, triumphs baby's was a young pool. woman named Hannah in March of 2005. While he was taking a break from his search for a boyfriend free girl, she reportedly approached Chris and asked him out on a. I love the classical music play in the background. This is a fucking trip. I don't know if I can handle this, man. I don't even know if I can handle this. Date. This made the autistic man ecstatic, believing that his years of care. Th this made the autistic man grow a massive rock hard erection. Hmm. <laughs> I may be less stressed out fucking play Elden Ring. Carrying an attraction sign had finally paid off. Of course, he had to tell everybody he knew about this exciting development. And that included... What is your job? Thank you, by the way. What I'm just curious. You must... It must be something you really did... You don't like because you sound like there's relief. Like you let out a giant turd that was a little... That was a little firm. You had to push. And now it's like, ah, oh, I pushed out that turd of a job. Meet his new friend, Anna McLaren. However, she knew. See, takes like that is why the like, as much as I know, I lean way more progressive. The left doesn't like me because I'll say things like that. You can't tell me even an average or mad looking woman can walk into a fucking bar. This is when I get angry at the left, though. Like, that's just the reality of it. A woman walks, they can get, if a guy did that, they would get kicked out. And I will die on that hill. Anyway, let's continue. I'm going to shut up now. Something Chris didn't. Hannah had no intention of yes, dating these are him and had drawings. merely asked him out as a prank. Chris was shocked by this revelation and immediately went to confirm it with Hannah. Upon admitting to what yes, she had I done, do, Neil. Chris I was watched devastated Color all the time. and loudly yelled, No! in the middle of the mall. This disturbance earned Chris yet another temper. Oh yeah, especially if it's a male bartender and the ah, meh looking women is showing titties. Absolutely. Free drinks, she'll get laid. It, it's just, yeah, that's how it is. It's just how the human brain is wired. I don't know why saying things like that is a fucking offensive. Prairie Band. These events were retold in his Sonic Chu comic, The Rise and Fall of My Heart. In this version, Anna's role was replaced by Rose Chu, and perhaps more notably, Chris's emotional state was visually portrayed by... Rispergu, thank you for the wiener. I love birds.
minutes. Try to relax your anus. Try to relax, Try to your, relax anus. your anus. I need to let this play for a little bit. We're going to get through this thing at like three in the morning at this point. By a heart level, it begins 10 minutes with in. him at 20%. But when Hannah asks him out, it skyrockets all the way up to 100%. However, when her cruel trick is revealed, it plummets back down to 15. Throughout many Sonic Chew issues... Like his parents... Oh, okay, yeah, look, I'm stopping again 15 seconds. 15 seconds into nine minutes. Um, They didn't see any of this. I mean, I know they were like 70 when they had him, but they didn't see anything like you're really that on a different planet. Like if my 20 something year old son was doing this, I understand he's autistic, but he's highly functioning. Like you would be like, all right, we got to get you to therapy. We got to do some stuff like this is not okay. You know, and then the, he already at this point got kicked out of a college for putting up a flyer saying, hey, I want someone to suck my penis, essentially. <laughs> Liasu Eif, li retail, I was a supervisor, plus I was getting barely, barely paid above minimum wage. Isn't that like, yeah, oh, yeah, you're a supervisor. Here's 20 cents more an hour. Christmas time wiped me out. Oh, working in retail, of course. Inventory was what broke the camel's back. I'll tell you a story. I don't know if you were here for it last time, just because I just to show you how much I relate. Um, I always remember it was 2007. God, I was with my XXX at the time. Just and that just brings me back to that. And I was at Circuit City, uh, fixing computers. And uh, Black Friday, even though I was a technician, had to be there on the floor. And it's gone now. It was on Route 9. And this is before, like, now Black Friday is still a big thing. And people, will, you'll, someone will get pistol whipped over a fucking toaster. <laughs> but that was before the internet really, 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 really became, like, the main place for Black Friday deals. So people still had, there was a line. I had to park at a gas station, like, probably three tenths of a mile down the road let's say no yeah i don't like exaggerating and i had to walk to the and the parking lot was full and there were people fighting in there so not fighting like physically but some i remember it was some dude who was like older dude who was like yelling at my manager and i'm like this is hell over what over shit that you're never gonna buy <laughs> like a lot of it, let mo it's so funny. Like people end up literally beating the shit of each other over useless stuff. Uh, and I think like five, like didn't someone get killed a few years ago? At like a Walmart getting trampled, and like over what? Over like some no name brand 4K TV that has like no that wasn't even a smart TV, and now someone's dead because human beings are terrible. Chris had drawn, but point being, I know I went on a tangent there i can relate dude ads to replicate the look of a real publication the most notable of these after using hold on this was in my face the whole time after using axe body spray i felt scentily delicious and confident seriously scentily delicious that sounds like hey yo man i felt scentily delicious and confident you know what i'm saying <laughs> i was sensationalized man well, man. It's sexy cocoa, the relish, most delicious. Get your ass some Axe body spray, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? This was the ad for Axe body spray in Sonic Chew number two. He made no secret about it. But you know what, man? Even if you don't have another job lined up, Leucia, I meant to say this before. This is more important. Your mental health and your health is more important than anything. Because here's the thing. Yes, obviously you have to pay your bills. But if you're dead from stress, you ain't going to be working anyway, right? Right? You got to do what's best for you. Uh, job wanted to be a, be a night lead. Night lead gets paid 20 bucks a week more. <laughs> Get the... What? <laughs> you know what they'll do? You know how they spin it to... I 
fucking hate this. They used to do this at the retail jobs I was at. Oh, but the experience could actually the fuck out of here. And it was like when people became like assistant managers at, at the time, Filene's like, yeah, okay, you're making a salary, especially back then in like 2001 of 50 grand was okay. But what they don't, here's the asterisk in super small print when you're promoted to those positions is that your life is at the store because you're salaried. So what they do to take advantage of that is like, oh, now you're, oh yeah, to make that 50 grand though, we need you at the store because you are our leader in that section. You got to work 80 hours a week. Oh yeah, we forgot to tell you that. Fuck. Hmm. So that's how they fuck you. It's either, oh, the experience, so we get to rob you blind and make you do a lot more work and not pay you much more. Or even if they do pay you more, like, and it's like, it's okay, because a lot of people would accept it because it's like, shit, 50 grand as opposed to <laughs> what was minimum wage back in 2001. Okay, cool. Oh, wow. I, I never, I literally might as well just sleep in my car because I get to sleep an hour a night. It's so fucked, man. And Fanta Zen, I am, I don't, yeah, I don't think, I can't believe he put an Axe body spray in there like, like he thought that advertisers are going to, what is, after using Axe body spray, I feel scentily delicious, okay, it's scent alive, man, you know what I'm saying? About his love for the product, likely buying into its ad campaign that showed its wearers being irresistible to women. Chris states that Axe makes him feel, quote unquote, scently delicious. And I hate to say it, let's keep it real. If you use Axe Body Spray, I apologize. Who uses Axe Body Spray? It's people that don't shower and are degenerates, at least from what I've seen. Ah, yeah, you got me. Me, the, me, the non-racist is racist. I know you're joking. Oh, man, that character. I miss that character, but I can't because... And you know, it was funny. I would always see it, it, people would be like, I, I'm black and I think this character is hilarious. I'm black and I think this character is hilarious. And, you know, because that's the thing. There was nothing racist about the character. It was just a caricature that I made up from like a culmination of fanboys with a sprinkle of Mike Tyson in there, I guess. So, I didn't think of Mike Tyson at the con time, but I probably, it was like subconsciously he was another idea for it you know but in 2022 there's no way there's no way i could bring that character back it sucks because it's fun i genuinely have fun with that character and confident however the main concern is found in sonic chew and rose chew's conversation ah there's bots i see that i see the bots oh wow i actually have semi-decent viewership that's what it means <laughs> i'm serious is what it means uh, me too. I wish he could come back. Happy Tech USA came back. I want to make that more of a character, though, where I get, like, dressed up in, like, a two-piece suit or something. Hey, Rich, did you hear that Vimeo wants creators to pay up or get off the platform? So, wait, they want them to pay so the top 1% creators can make money? Oh, stop it. You got to send me proof of that. That's too insane. I mean, I've, I've used Vimeo like five times in my life, so. Station. Gee, I wonder why. Near the bottom of the page, which seems to imply that Chris believes wearing Axe is a suitable replacement for bathing. It also includes Rose Chu asking the baffling question, may I orbit your belt? As the May I orbit your belt? Sonic Chu Comics continued, Chris introduced his childhood friend, Sarah Ham. I can. I've done it. Dude, I had to. I didn't know this shit was going to pop off. I mean, I joked around and stuff like that, but yeah. Yes, we are still talking. Hooded Stranger, we are still talking about Chris Chan's ver uh, Virgin Rage, which is quite strong. Hammer as a character, as well as her boyfriend at the time, Wes Isley. In the story, the three of them are all given the ability to transform into hedgehog versions of themselves. Chris makes no secret about his jealousy towards Wes, writing him as a villainous character and another one of his many personal rivals. He dedicates an entire page to a discussion between the two, in which Chris talks about how jealousy felt during an incident in which he saw Sarah sitting on Wes's lap. In this confrontation, Chris... Yeah. 
Gee, I wonder if this is at all just based on reflections of his like thought process. Portrays himself as very honest and mature, <sighs> while Wes comes across as cruel and selfish. As you've probably been able to figure out at this point, these episodes were Chris's main way of coping with his problems. Rather than try to learn from his mistakes, he would instead take no personal responsibility and create his own reality in which he was the victim and the world. And that's what he really thought. It's kind of like it's funny, but when you think about it, this is all a reflection about how he perceived reality. You know? And it's kind of scary when you think about it that way. The world was out to get him. Because of this, similar situations of Chris having run-ins with others such as law enforcement would happen over and over, with him seemingly learning nothing each time. However, this eventually came to an end around mid-2005 when parents? Chris's mother Barbara told him to stop adding these personal details to his comics since she wasn't fond of the idea that their personal life would be shared on the internet. Chris agreed and decided to officially end the autobiographical subsections with Sonic 2 number 4 in September, a compilation of all the previous personal sections of his work as well as a few new ones. Funnily enough, What's up, Sonic 2 drummer? number 4 4 was released almost six months before Sonic 2 number 3. The first of this final batch of real life reenactments was the two part story Mick Attack, in which Chris had been kicked out of a McDonald's for loitering, allegedly once again trying to do his old attraction sign trick. In but why were his parents stopping him? And then Ralph filmed it. Yes, Wooly Baxter. Oh, no, you know about Ralph? Damn. Ralph is kind of infamous, huh? People still think I bullshitted that story. I always laugh at that. Why the fuck would I make that up? It's too insane to make up. Bro. You can't... Hi, I'm... Like... You can't... Go into McDonald's. Like, I think even if, if a woman was doing that at a McDonald's, I'll give them that. Like, you would be like, yo, what are you? All right, I don't care you have titties. I'm try just trying to eat a burger. No, they would still get laid at McDonald's. <laughs> nope, but once I gave the cops Ralph's information, literally that was the day all the phone calls stopped. And from what I heard through the grapevine, his wife, like, found out because the cop went there. I still have no idea what the guy looks like. I just, I unfortunately had to take the nuclear option because I'm like, this guy is out of his fucking mind. I'm, he's going to end up either forcibly butt-fucking me or shooting me, so something has to be done. Try to relax your anus. In true Chris Chan fashion, this retelling portrays the managers as aggressors while Chris is simply an innocent victim. By <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to pick up women at a fucking fast food restaurant. Just let me be. Oh, that was not what I wanted to hit, but hey. <laughs> Most angles, Mick Attack is fairly standard as far as early Sonic Chew goes. However, there. So, okay, this makes it even worse because his mom at the time didn't have dementia. So, you know, he's doing this weird shit. You're obviously seeing the comics, but yeah, Chris, don't stop trying to harass women in public places. That's okay. Just don't put any of our personal information out there. What the fuck were you thinking? I got to piss. Yes, Fent is in. I agree. This is... You can't... It's... Wow. Anyway, let me piss. I'll be right back.
Try to relax your anus. I mean, it's just weird how many warning signs seeing this in this d- level of detail from uh, Gamer from Mars, which first off, make sure I, I didn't put a link to his channel last time, which I, sh- I didn't even mean to do that. Uh, Here is the video. <laughs> Art's fucking thumbnails. He just gets right to the point. Like, yo, uh, the insane life of the bipillow guy. Smoked crack. <laughs> Oh, on. Okay. There is one element that makes it stand out. About halfway through the story, Chris summons his twin sister, Crystal, to help him in the battle. Of all the bizarre creations that were spawned in the Sonic 2 universe, Crystal ranks amongst the strangest, and her inclusion in the story confused... I just think, I don't even know, like, how detached. I think it was a mixture. His parents didn't sound like they were that emotionally stable themselves. They were also older, and they just kind of... So you have a kid who is... has, I guess, functional autism, and they're just in their own world, and the parents aren't doing anything. Like So obviously his mom at the time, who was... She didn't have dementia yet, knew about what was going on. They were like, oh, yeah, just keep your personal information out. But if you want to harass women at McDonald's, just have at it. You know what I mean? It's like, what are you doing? To many. You see, uh, most of his characters have a real-life counterpart, but Chris didn't have a sister. Many theorize that Crystal represented... And why does she have? Re- why does his twin sister have really big titties? Did a female version of Chris? Since in Mick Attack, Crystal stands up to the manajerks who are harassing him. So- the man, yeah, the manajerks, they're manajerks. Oh no! How dare you! Sonic 2 number 4 concludes with the story of Off Target. This was Chris's dramatic retelling of a real-life incident that happened in July, in which he was once again confronted by jerk ops while carrying around his attraction sign. But this... (laughs) Just let me carry... Just let me try to get laid and harass people in peace, please. You can't tell me that his parents, who at the time they had their cognitive abilities about them, didn't know of, like, what are you doing? Were you just like, yeah, we're old and we don't... Yes, that's exactly what happened. They were just old, and they were like, we're tired, we can't handle him. And it's kind of sad if you think about it. Why this music's playing, I don't know. I have birds next to me. Beautiful birds. Wonderful birds. Big cocks. Ban Aaron Brandy's fart box. Why? Just why? Absolutely not. No. Unless there's some reason you're doing like some 8K video editing or something with CAD work that's very intensive or whatever. You know, no. Get a 3080. I still think the 3080, but they have then they have the 3080 Ti, which is a ripoff. For what it, you just get a 3080 or wait because I think that isn't the 4000 series cards being in that. No, don't wait. Just get the fucking card. What am I talking about with what's going on? time and target. Unlike most of the other events of this nature, things quickly escalated to the point of the police being called. Chris ended up getting arrested and charged with disorderly conduct and trespassing, although these charges were dropped after two court hearings. Nonetheless, this event obviously traumatized the entire Chandler <laughs> family. Despite his mother's wishes, just let me harass Chris continued people, to write please. about his real life frequently in his comics, though just not as on the nose as before. 
Sonic Chew number 5 focused once again on Chris and his never-ending love quest, containing the story of the recent wedding of Sarah Hammer to a man named William Spicer. While it's laid out in rather confusing terms, the dialogue in this episode states that Chris is only attending the wedding in spirit, implying that he was not invited. However, an image does exist of Chris and Sarah posing with her wearing a veil. Seemingly meaning that, even if he was not at the wedding, he saw her shortly before or afterward. While obviously nothing can be said for certain, Chris seems happy for Sarah in the picture, and that is reflected <laughs> with this sign and unleash his virgin rage. Yeah, he's angry and lonely. That doesn't seem like a recipe for disaster. That doesn't seem like every mass shooter's manifesto combined. Oh my god. And and the thing is, obviously, it kind of bothers me, because I, I know she has dementia now, but back then she didn't. Nothing? Like, just crickets? You gonna do anything? In the comic. The story is actually fairly mature by Chris's standards, as he lets go of his crush and accepts that they will not end up together. Upon this issue's release, it seems that Christian was actually making progress, although that may be due to the fact Abdullah, he had his sights much. set on a new potential sweetheart. As one door closed, another seemed to be opening, as the comic- <laughs> No, as one person he stopped stalking, he found another to stalk. Ends with Chris catching the bouquet as Sarah throws it, traditionally meaning he will be the next to get married. Coincidentally, in this story, Chris also introduced a new character, Sailor Megatune. And in the very beginning of the comic, he credits her creation to his friend, Megan Schroeder. Hello, my name is Christian Weston Chandler. Oh from God, Virginia. What, is, what? what potato with a USB port did he plug this into? What'd you do for a PS3? What I would do for a PS3? I tell you uh. what I do. Well, if I had the money, I'd wait in line, like all the other people did with their tents and all that good stuff. I throw away the cure for autism, if I had it. As briefly mentioned in the previous episode, Chris met a woman named Megan Oh, she looks thrilled. A few years prior at the game place, but he appeared to have recently been making efforts to grow their friendship into something more. Since the young woman was a fan of Sailor Moon and My Little Pony, Chris decided to get into those franchises as well. For this brief moment in time, it seemed like Chris was actually evolving as a person. Oh god, look at that. Or look at that early, late 2000s mini system behind him. Oh god, I feel like I'm back at Circuit City Express looking at those who were all over the place. Panasonic and Sony and... Oh man accepting that his previous crush had moved on and began taking a genuine interest in his new potential sweetheart's hobbies. But unfortunately, JVC, yes, 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 JVC was a big brand, Iowa. This would not last. The 20-some-year-old man went overboard and started spending copious amounts of money on toys and merchandise for Megan's favorite IPs. Unrelated, he also began buying adult DVDs and toys, including a blow-up doll. Which he fucked. It's important to keep in mind that at this point, Chris was unemployed, with his only source of income coming from monthly social security payments. During this time, Megan was fully aware of Chris's interest in her. He would reportedly often try to- In every picture they're together, she looks extremely uncomfortable. I wonder why. Touch her without consent, a problem she would bring up in an email to Chris. One more thing. Please minimize your touchiness. You know well I dislike it, and I keep reminding you. Understand I'm not angry, but annoyed and a bit disappointed. I remember you said you'd never do it again, and yet I know you're just being friendly and all, but I really hate being touched by anyone. The young lady was clearly trying to nip this crush in the bud, but Christopher would not listen. This would, of course, eventually blow up in his face. But Chris had a few more heartbreaks to go through before that happened. On June 27th, 2006, Chris's beloved... Yeah. She just looks like unhappy, like, oh, fuck. 
Here we go again. Dog Patty tragically passed away. She was quite old, as the canine had joined the Chandler family all the way back in 1992, and her worsening health problems made them finally decide it was time to put her out of her misery. In Chris's eulogy for his pet, he stated that he was the one who signed the paper authorizing Birds. the vet to put Patty to sleep, in order to spare his mother the burden. I raised Patty since she was a six-week-old pup. And I wanted to take the strain for signing the one-way ticket. It was hard for me, but it was for the best. So I signed that paper with a crying sonatu face saying, We love you, Patty. After that, I gave her my final pets, hug, hand to paw hold, eye contact, air rub, cheek the fur rub, and I sadly waved her for the last time. And I said, Goodbye, Patty. I love you. After a small funeral, Patty Chandler was buried in the backyard, underneath the doghouse that had been her home for so many years. Chris's eulogy may have been the most heartfelt thing he had ever written. They had essentially grown up together, and an argument could have been made that Patty was the closest and most long-lasting friendship Chris ever had. In February of 2007, Sonic Chew number 6 was released, containing the episode One Lucky Dog. It tells the story of Patty eating some magical grass and transforming into a talking anthropomorphic dog-slash-human hybrid. Upon discovering this, Chris takes Patty into his... You notice the parallels, though, of... Uh... Everything, his fictional world is tied in reality. So, again, the parents should have saw red flags. And they had, all of their wits were about them at this time, too. You know, it's not, you know, like I expected them to do this in tw or his mom to do this in 2020, you know. Bedroom, where he reveals that he had a portal to his fictional town of Quickville hidden within the closet. He takes his old dog through the portal and tells her she can now live in this reality for the rest of eternity. This was the first time Chris portrayed Quickville as something of a religious afterlife. On February 25th, 2007, Christian celebrated his 25th birthday. Was that shirt like his thing? At his preferred hangouts, the gameplay. <laughs> Shit, I thought that was, I thought that was alcohol. <laughs> I was like, that that man does not need alcohol. Place, surrounded by his friends and family. Also at this event, he officially released a DVD he had been. He always had that shirt on. Before Chris Chad it transitioned, he always had that shirt on. Working on titled "Yep, I'm on TV." This was a compilation of all of Chris's home movies and television appearances, as well as the photos he had taken over the years. Chris also recorded a video intended to bestow advice to younger people, based on the wisdom he'd learned in his quarter century on Earth, providing a very good point of reference for I his mindset I remember this video at the back in the day. Dad, while you're playing with these things, you should keep in mind of what your true original gender is. Because uh, it's like you're learning about that girl you want to take on a date young man or uh, likewise you feel more comfortable to approach that boy uh, just saying hello that you've been checking out from a distance young lady and hopefully in due time or now each and every one of you will stay straight you know girl for boy boy for girl everything else is vice as said by dr kinsey Despite the fact that Chris did not intend to distribute his DVD publicly, he still wanted another outlet to share more of his creative work with the world. What an awkward picture. Look at all, look at all the hoarding. Look at all that. He just has like a bed in the middle of shit. So in May of 2007, he created an account on the virgining platform of YouTube and named his channel Sonic Chew. His first upload to the site was a video about the game Soul Calibur. This video depicted a fight between it's a good game. Between Chris and Mary Lee Walsh, using customized characters from the game, where of course he comes out victorious. By his stand- <laughs> Shocking. This video was yeah. relatively harmless, but the creation of a YouTube channel would go on to become perhaps one of the greatest mistakes Chris ever made, as things would quickly spiral out of control.
And again, knowing how he is with these was with these weird comics and shit. His parents, like I said, had their wits about wits about them at the why wouldn't you stop him? Ribbit, ribbit, I cannot hold it. The last little toilet already sold it. Ribbit, ribbit. In the rain or in the snow, I got the funky flow. But now I really gotta go. In the rain or in the snow. In the rain or in the snow, I got the funky flow. Rapper the rapper. Great new music video game. In the rain or in the snow. Once you played it, you can't get it out of your head. In June of 2007, Sony announced Par Okay, Red Glass, I will. I apologize for missing the other super chat. Rappa the Rapper Chop Chop Master Onions Rap Showdown, a contest in which participants were required to recreate a song from the PlayStation franchise for a chance to win two oh, no. PSP game systems. I, I think I remember The only this. rules were that contestants were not allowed to change the lyrics or use backing tracks in their entries. Upon learning of this contest, Chris decided that he absolutely had to but they knew he had autism and they had to have known he had did they really buy into it if they did that then that means that i know they were out there too did, did I, I hear rumors i can't verify them, that's why i make sure i bring up the rumors uh that his parents were against like mental health uh see having him seek a mental health expert or a psychiatrist or whatever but fucking really So much of this could have been avoided if they put in like an ounce more effort, you know? To win. Yes, they did. They thought Megan set up the trolls. Oh, for fuck's sake. With this, the novice YouTuber began formulating a plan to give one of the PSPs to Megan, and he would then take her on the. Tr yes, because. <laughs> by trying to buy women works out just great. Why? Don't ever, ever, unless you're already dating them. There's a piece of advice I can give. Don't ever but give a woman. If she if she comes up to you and asks you to buy her a drink, you know what you He tells them to fuck off. <laughs> or be like, yeah, no, thank you. I'll buy myself a drink. You know, do not. Don't. Don't get played like that. I kn I've known women who have told me, yeah, I'll just go to a bar and get free drinks the whole night. I could go with an empty wallet and drink half the fucking bar because every dude with a boner. I oh, wow. It's almost like women. It's much easier for them to get laid if they go to a bar. <laughs> Don't. Ever. I mean, obviously, if you're on a date with someone, yeah, that's different. But I'm saying, like, if they're like, hi, want to buy me a drink? Be like, hi, no. No, thank you. I like keeping my money or buying a drink for my fucking self. Trip to Pax West, where she would surely fall in love with him. Chris quickly got to work making a video to guarantee him a win in the contest. As you may expect from Chris's usual standards, though, it didn't turn out very well. First of all, the entry was filmed using his PSI, a cheap... I remember these. I remember when these were up on his channel, I'm pretty sure. Oh, this fucking guy. Oh, my God. Try to relax your anus. I can't camera attachment for the PlayStation 3. Secondly, oh. the entry is full of nonsensical and jarring effects taken from Sony's built-in editing software, most likely in an attempt to make the uh. video look more professional. On top of all this... No, that looks just... That, that's... Oh, man. Martin Scorsese, watch out. And he's wearing the Sonichu pendant. He, that, he really thought that was a flex. I can't, man. This Chris clearly did not actually memorize the lyrics to the song, as he frequently stumbled over the words and looked off camera to read them. He also technically broke the rules by changing the lyrics, as he began the video rapping about his plan to make Megan fall in love with him.
Miraculously, or more likely due to the fact that very few people entered the contest, Chris's entry made it to the final 10 and became eligible for public voting. Oh, it all began here. This would be the start of an aggressive marketing campaign as he tried to win through any means necessary. He began posting ads to his website, encouraging the readers of Sonic Chew to vote for him. He also started handing out... Yeah, dude, Jorge, he so needed it, man. Thank you for the super chat. It's just such... And... His comics were kind of saying what was his reality. And you don't look at that... Because he's actually... You can't say he was actually doing what was in the comics. So as a parent, you're just like... We got to step in and do something, not just don't put our personal shit in there. I don't know. Wow. Now flyers to patrons at the game place in order to earn more votes. In addition, Chris also began emailing all of his old acquaintances asking for help. These included old gal pals and teachers from high school and strangers. Sub <laughs> wait, wait. He called, yo, he called teachers from high school. No, the fuck he didn't. Did he call teachers from high school? Be like, hey, uh, I was your student at one point. Would you mind voting for me in this PlayStation video game contest? They were like, oh, go away. Hold on one second. Of them all, his estranged half-brother, Cole Smithy, who he had not spoken to in years. Surprisingly enough, he did respond to Chris's request, agreeing to vote for him on one condition. I'll make a deal with you. You find out the identity of my real father from Barbara and email me the person's name, and I will vote for you in your- Yeah, let me put on that my list of 8 billion other things I have to do, but uh... Speaking of which... My editor sent me another draft of the Wii U video. Only reason to bring it up because you asked me. Oh, I got to talk to him about some other shit this week, too. We got to get other stuff going. Your effort to travel to Seattle. Deal? If you couldn't tell, Cole's relationship with his mother, Barbara, was strained. He alleges to have been the victim of severe mental and physical abuse throughout his childhood by his mom. Hmm. It, that's starting to explain why it, there was this breeding ground for Chris's insanity. As well as Bob and her former husband, Jerry Harmon. Cole also believed Barbara was lying to him about the identity of his biological father. She claimed his dad was a man named Jack Dale Smithy, but Cole insisted it to be a different old flame of hers, Ran Coleman Yeats. Suffice to say, Chris never followed through on Ash. Hold on, speaking of which, my editor is messaging me. Let me see what he has to say. Dude, this video... Can I play your message publicly on stream? Let me see what he says. Not that there would be anything in there, but like if there's something he wants to ask me about the video. Asking Barbara about Cole's father. Despite all of the vigorous campaigning he had done, Christian still decided he needed to do more in order to increase his chances of victory. This competition was far too important in his mind, so he chose to turn to less than admirable tactics. This is when he began to create several email addresses in order to stuff the ballots, voting as many times... <laughs> he was stuffing ballots for Parappa the Rapper. He was stuffing ballots. He was faking votes. This is the real conspiracy, man, not the 2020 fucking election. <laughs> Turbo Express is done taking a dump. As he possibly could for his entry, even making a fake account in order to leave a review for his video, in which he refers to Megan as his girlfriend. Such honesty of his situation and the devotion for his lucky girlfriend adds great emotion to his performance. 
The visually appealing FX added the best humor and biggest laugh I had among the bunch. I enjoyed the fun background to his assumed to be bedroom, and his informative feedback on playing Guitar Hero on PlayStation 3. Philip, Rich, I'm working three days in a row at the ER to starting tomorrow, 12 hour shifts. Please give me strength. However, it is the ER, and those days off are needed, but don't you have like four days off after that? So it's a double edged sword. But working the e like 12 hours working the er is like 24 hours <laughs> working anywhere else in a row also he has nailed the lyrics a cappella. as the brave autistic warrior so creatively put it at the end rap 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 He said he was masturbating in the other message he didn't want you to hear. <laughs> Just finished Final Fantasy VI. Day, definitely one of my favorite games of all. Now, Final Fantasy VI, is that Final Fantasy III in the States? Yeah, that's Final Fantasy three in the States. Well, he didn't say anything. You could kind of hear it. He didn't say anything in the message. Uh, uh, I don't know. Anyway. All right. This one he said I could play. Rich is sending you an update about the Wii U video. It's, uh, it's probably the best produced video that we've ever done. It's hard to believe that we actually did this. And it's about 90% done. So you just need to do what I said earlier. Get that to me tomorrow. And it will be coming out this week, early week, guaranteed. Don't know how long it is. I'm guessing it's close to 40 minutes long. But it goes quick. I made sure the pacing's quick. The music's great. Everything's amazing in this. So, so yeah. Get a draft up to you tomorrow after the intro, and then we'll fine tune in. And it'll be out, and you'll touch me with birds. I'll add some corn with some holes in there, and we'll be done. Try to relax your anus. That's a wrap. After doing every. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know that much about Final Fantasy, but I do that, like, three in the States was six in Japan. Everything in his power to ensure victory, Chris waited anxiously for the final results of the contest to be released. On August 3rd, the self-proclaimed autistic warrior logged onto the website excitedly, only to be crushed upon realizing he had lost to a man named Adam Stackhouse. As you can probably- I think I remember the lore with this too. Imagine Chris did not concede defeat gracefully. He began posting incessantly on the PlayStation message boards and emailing Sony directly about how he should have won. He angrily pointed out Adam's use of an acapella beat in the video, which he believed to be a violation of the contest rules regarding backing track. Imagine caring this much about a stupid fucking contest for a game that even at that point was semi irrelevant. However, this ultimately amounted to nothing, as Sony ignored his emails and his tantrum resulted in a ban from the PlayStation form. Chris also emailed Megan after his big loss. <laughs> ah, there's Megan again, looking thrilled as always. cursing Adam Stackhouse and lamenting the fact that he would not be able to take her to PAX West. This was apparently the final straw for Megan, who had been trying to tell Chris for months that he had no chance with her romantically. She sent a heated email back, berating him for ignoring her countless requests for him to stop trying to date her. Christian, I haven't been checking my email until recently. And I just want to say that your behavior has irritated me for the last time. First, I'll start off with saying 
that I'm glad you didn't win the contest because I have no interest in going on a trip alone with someone who can't keep his hands off me. I'm not your girlfriend and I never will be. When I say, don't touch me, that means don't touch me. <laughs> what may seem fr I shouldn't, I I'm just like, he thought that this contest was gonna make everything, yeah, now she's like, dude, yeah, I won a Parappa the Rapper contest. Now you're totally going to get laid, Chris. Uh, I got to piss. I'm going to go get one more lozenge. wrap the lozenges here i don't know why that's a big uh my editor wanted you to know this also play this for everyone i went into uh dark side phil's live stream on your account and i admit this i just typed in birds and everyone went nuts about birds and phil didn't look happy so turn on your ps4 Live stream, touch yourself, pretend the camera's off, touch me, bye. Seven Try to minutes. relax your anus. The fuck are you watching? You're watching Saggy Melons is in the building. Haven't talked to you in a minute. We are watching the Chris Chan documentary. I am debating still if I want to play Elden Ring. I'm going to play Elden Ring, but am I going to play it on stream? I should. I kind of promised I would. Not promised, but I put a survey up, and most people want me to play it. I'm definitely going to play it either way, but let's see how long that... Because I want to... I'm, def, I'm genuinely interested in this documentary. I've been following Chris Chan since, like... I think this is the same video. That's the video, I believe. Friendly to you is sexual harassment to me. You whine that you're just being friendly, but you obviously have no consideration for my feelings. And I don't like your Megan obsession. 
I don't like being a character in your comics. I don't like how you made me a character in Soul Calibur, an animal. Yeah, think about how awkward all that is. Like, how do you, you know, I, I, I mean, you understand he has, can't open this fucking lozenge. I don't know why it looks like a honeybee went in here and took a shit all over. In terms of like, it's just spread all over. Uh, it's like uh, spread your cheeks and just go to town. There we go. Like how, I mean, you have to feel for her how awkward that must be. And he's not a kind of guy who we like, if, you know, if a guy flirt with you, it's like, yeah, you know, I'm not interested. They'd be like, all right, hopefully we'd be like, all right, that's cool. He doesn't get it. You know? Animal Crossing. That kind of behavior really freaks me out. The week's events were a massive blow to Christian's ego. Why did he blow? Why did he blow? <laughs> <laughs> why did he draw himself with like a raging mullet look at that business in the front party in the back baby i think it's a flowing mullet chris wants mullet confirmed not only did he lose the contest but also the woman that he loved at this moment it seemed like things hit rock bottom as the mirage of a future Chris had planned blew up in front of his eyes. But unfortunately... Didn't he admit on camera that he paid for a hook or two? It would soon turn out that this was only the start of his problems. Because the thing is, these new antics on YouTube piqued the interest of an online community that would soon propel our protagonist into the spotlight. <laughs> oh no... And that is how angry I am at Adam Stackhouse, oh, Apple yeah. Lucy, Rudell, and Surya Butchwald. They should have been disqualified because they had music and more than one person in their Freakazoid videos. I'm in Rich the Swag Lord, how are you? strange and self-destructive behavior onto social media sites, it was only a matter of time before people took notice. And that day... Oh, he he's a troll's wet dream come true. Oh my god. Arrived on October 26 of 2007. This is when photos of Chris playing the Pokemon trading card game at the game place were posted onto a little image board known as 4chan. At the same time, discussions of him began on the Something Awful forums, prompted by a user who had witnessed Chris's pursuit of true love in real life. His multiple public outbursts and unique worldview made him impossible to ignore, and he was quickly becoming a favorite topic of discussion across the web. Despite the internet's instant fascination with Chris Chan, there were some people who theorized this was all just an elaborate troll. As a result, someone decided to go no, it wasn't. Go right to the source and find out for themselves. On November 3rd, Chris received an email containing fan art people had made of him and his characters. Among these was a drawing of Chris sitting at a desk labeled Girlfriend Auditions, with a sign which reads, No Darkies. He also included a few pornographic images. And he made those images? Hold on. Nation with Chris Chan, there were some people who theorized this was all just an elaborate troll. As a result, someone decided to go right to the source and find out for themselves. On November 3rd, Chris received an email containing fan art people had made of him and his characters. Um, okay. I, I was like, oh no. Among these was a drawing of Chris sitting at a desk labeled Girlfriend Auditions, with a sign which reads, He did write racist shit before too, though. No darkies. He also included a few pornographic images, including a comic of Chris having a sexual encounter with Sonic Chew and a drawing of Sonic Chew pleasuring himself. It didn't take long for Chris to respond. I am... <laughs> that, that, this is where the shit show goes nuclear. I'm feeling great detest towards the other two. Sonichu and I are not of that nature at all. If you would like to make it up to me, though, please draw a strip of Rose Chew stripping for Sonichu. I am. What?
like, he was like, oh, don't troll me, leave me alone. But if you want to draw me a uh, female Sonic character to jerk off to, you could have at it. Oh, come on. Oh, God. But again, at this time, his parents are only worried about him showing the house. Oh, don't show that we're hoarders. Oh, my God. Strike, damn it. I will not be veered in any other disgustingly grotesque direction. The sender quickly apologized for the art and sent Chris the comic he had requested of an intimate moment between Sonic Chew and... Of course the trolls would do that. Roast Chew. The one catch was that in this picture, he chose to depict Roast Chew with a penis rather than female genitalia. Chris may have been upset before, but this drove him completely over the edge. Rose Chew is a girl. She never had a frickin' pickle. I can't, man. She never had a pickle. Is it a dill pickle, though? Those are delicious. If I see one more freaking pickle, and you may spread this quote to other adult fan artists, I will create... Did they censor that, or did he really say pickle? Oh, if he said pickle, this is that is gold. Ate you in Soul Calibur 3 and beat you up like there's no tomorrow. If there was anyone who remained unconvinced as to whether Chris was legitimate, this response was what finally made the trolls realize they had struck gold. Shortly thereafter, a man named Jason Kendrick Howell created a page about Chris on Encyclopedia Dramatica, a wiki dedicated to the discussion and mockery of strange internet figures. Chris now had the kind of undivided attention that most people would do their best to avoid. He because you can't blame people at first because when you don't know like his issues and everything it just looks like like oh this this is too easy this is too easy this can't be real oh it's real i just shit myself like that's what i would think i think anyone with average intelligence would be like that can't be real give me a break he would need to choose his next moves carefully if he wanted the trolls to go away. Unfortunately, he did not do that. A few days later, Chris posted a video directed at the users of Encyclop- This is where mommy and daddy should have stepped in with their son with special needs and been like, Get the fuck off the internet, son! We're shutting it down! None of that happened as far as I know. Wikipedia Dramatica. Although he quickly detoured from the original topic and began rambling to the camera about his life, he talked about his supposedly proud lineage, bringing up his Cherokee ancestors, as well as the fact that he was descended from Anne Boleyn and oh, some shit. travelers on the Mayflower. He also discussed his various hardships views. throughout life, such as his early schooling and his inability to find a girlfriend. It's unclear what Chris hoped to gain from this. Perhaps he wanted sympathy, or maybe he thought this information would yeah, make the trolls respect him. He concluded by requesting that the ED page of him be taken down, or at least edited to portray him in a more flattering light. Not only oh. did this request- Yeah, go to Encyclopedia and ask them to, to portray you in a more flattering light. <laughs> Tell me how that goes. <laughs> yeah, would you mind a, a website dedicated to, put, to putting up shit about people and making them look like lol cows. Could you make me not look like a lol cow? Please, thanks quest not stop the deluge of trolls but it only furthered the negative attention coming his way people continued making fun of christian and posting to the encyclopedia dramatica page much to his frustration things hit a boiling point only a couple days later when an old graphic internet shock image known as goatsy was uploaded to his wiki entry with the caption the true brains behind chris chan this sent Chris into a fit of rage as he went to his ED page and began editing it as he saw fit. Bizarrely, many of Chris's edits revealed... 
That's the worst thing. Dude, I know. I think I'm on Encyclopedia Dramatica. You know what I do? Absolutely nothing. Why? What would it do? That's like me sticking my dick in a hornet's nest. It's not going to end well. Built a lot of embarrassing information about him that had previously been unknown to his detractors, such as the fact that he used a blow-up doll, and how he truly believed his Sonic Chew medallion gave him special powers. Chris concluded his session by uploading a number of pornographic yes. drawings he- Cucumbers, 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 cucumbers. I can make like a techno beat out of that. He made in an attempt to prove his heterosexuality. Most of these were just pictures of his hedgehog characters, but there were a couple particularly shocking ones that stood out from the rest. Namely, these were a naked drawing of Mary Lee Walsh and a picture of Chris playing. Wait, that's the one who told him to go away and he drew a naked picture of her? That's the... Oh, here's a way to not make me seem like a stalker. I'm gonna draw you butt-ass naked, because that's healthy. Yeah, I think it's slow mode time. Try to relax your anus. Oh, wait. I've got balls of steel. Yeah, I think it's... I'm gonna put on, like, 30 seconds. Not a huge slow mode. Birds. Um... Uh, where is the option, YouTube? Here it is. Just 30 seconds, so it's not going to be a big deal. And, of course, it gets rid of the other Super Jets. Are you kidding? Uh, this all could have been avoided. If you... <laughs> Did I... I know there was another one I missed, didn't I? Uh, just because I put the chat in slow mode, YouTube? Why would you refresh the viewer activity? That's silly. Makes no sense. Uh, looking for a wireless headset with a good mic. Uh, I would recommend none. I can't. If you find one, let me know. Let me know. Because I have tried. I have looked up reviews. And I have tried wired and wireless ones. The only headset that I know with a good mic is the MSI DS502. But the thing about it, the only thing I have to say, MSI, is that Look at this. You would think that I, like I use this thing like 13 hours a day. The 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 rubber is coming off the the head strap, the the foam uh, speakers or the foam for the earpieces is all falling apart. And I really haven't put that many miles on this thing. They cut costs on it. I mean, the mic is still the same though. But this is the only headset I know, wired or wireless, and I'm even including like those. Fucking super professional side eyes are bullshit. This is the only one that has a decent mic. And I don't get it. If a cheap ass headset from MSI could have a decent mic on it, why can't these $300, $500 wireless headsets? Give me a break. Using a blow-up doll just like Peter. Yeah, he fucked it too. A CDI review? Maybe, actually. I'm not kidding. Eventually pleasuring an unidentified girl while giving a thumbs up to the viewer later named she came for quick at first to Oh god Again, where are the parents doesn't matter. He's 20 something. He's not all there. We know that where are the parents? Your son is wearing a, a, a imaginary Sonic the Hedgehog based character, butt ass naked, pretending to fuck someone in a comic. It's time to step in. <sighs> Many of the trolls believe the girl in the drawing to be Chris's fictional sister, Crystal based on their similar appearance. A few jokes were made about it, and things continued like this for months. Eventually, though, someone would come along and recognize the true identity of the girl in the drawing, taking the entire situation from bad to worse. This occurred in March of 2008, when Megan discovered the She Came For Quick drawing and was immediately horrified. 
date. Recon of course, understandably so. Seeing the girl as herself, she immediately emailed Chris, stating her disgust with what he had drawn and requesting that he remove all mentions of her from the internet. Chris soon responded, apparently misinterpreting what had upset her about the drawing. He seemed to believe that her shock came not from seeing such a vulgar image of herself, but instead from her lack of sexual experience. He decided to offer her some resources she could use to better educate herself. Oh, I get your concern. You, you think you need more sexual experience. Well, me as a frustrated virgin, let me teach you. I'm going to keep... Where are the Chandler parents at this point? Sonny boy is out of fucking control. Which included recommending she watch the 40-year-old virgin. Despite not fully understanding what he did wrong, Chris did make some effort to honor Megan's wishes, and he began deleting everything he could about her from the ED page. The thing is, he didn't delete the original graphic artwork that started the drama, choosing instead to simply zoom in on the image so Megan's face was no longer visible. Unsurprisingly, she was not pleased with this fix, once again emailing Chris, baffled as to why he didn't just delete it. She scolded him for selfishness and tried to get him to change his mindset where he believed the world was out to get him. Once again, clearly misreading the situation, Chris's response to this only served to dig his hole deeper. Megan, I am sorry for uploading the drawing, and I really wish I could go back in time and stop myself from making the mistake. Yet I do not regret drawing the drawing, because if I hadn't released my frustrations in this creative sense, I might actually have done something really dumb and stupid. Oh boy. So basically, he's essentially saying that he would have raped her. Oh my god. And anybody? Anybody home? Anybody home? Hello? It's unclear what Chris meant by this, but the sinister implications were enough to cause Megan to finally cut ties entirely. This event was devastating to Chris, as he had several self-destructive outbursts over the following weeks. It started when he yet again edited the Encyclopedia Dramatica page, berating himself and stating that he was a loser. In doing this, he also accidentally publicly revealed that the girl in She Came For Quick was Megan. Chris also uploaded an image gallery called, you know what, I hate myself too, filled with mm. panels from- That's a damn good question, man. I'm not sure. Why do you have to do AK? There's really no need for AK yet. Won't be for a while. From his comic showing his character getting beaten up or humiliated. As this self-destructive streak continued, it eventually bled out from the internet into Chris's real life. Grace Baptist Church, Chris's regular congregation, discovered his online activity and quickly shunned him. He also received a two-week suspension from the game place, although following further outbursts, it became permanent. In many people's opinion, this was the real turning point when Chris became Chris Chan. His gal pal had abandoned him, his church had rejected him, and his favorite hangout spot had banned him. In just a Gee, I wonder why. And then he basically says that, oh man, if I didn't make these drawings and, and draw out my fantasies, I he essentially said he would have raped somebody. Her, probably. <sighs> anyway. A few I short like weeks, a large portion of Chris's life had been ripped away, all due to his poor behavior. The only place he could turn to for attention now was the internet, because even if they were abusive, at the very least, they would talk to him. To the one called Jason Kendrick Howe, for he is, and I quote, in an email he sent me, the creator of the Encyclopedia Dramatica ED page for me. And he states further, My, my, you seem rather angry about it in your last YouTube video. 
A few months ago, you asked me why I made the page for you. My reason? You were, j you were too damn funny to ignore. In August of 2008, Chris released a couple more videos addressed to Encyclopedia Dramatica in yet another ill-conceived attempt to fight back. In these uploads, Chris angrily blamed the site's contributors for ruining his relationship with Megan, saying that they broke the emotional bond between them. He once again demanded the removal of the page, bond. holding the release of Sonic Chew number 7 in limbo until he got what he wanted. Despite his anger at the internet for driving a wedge between him and Megan, Chris seemed far more upset about the misconceptions people were spreading about his sexuality. A great deal of his time online was spent firmly establishing how much he hated seeing male genitalia, and how he preferred female genitals, which he referred to as which, China. Which, he also wanted to correct the record about- Which, if anyone needs to really affirm with you their, how straight they are, they're probably not straight. Uh. about the identity of the girl in the now infamous illustration, insisting that the girl depicted was Megan, not Crystal. No matter how much time passed, Chris could never get over people inaccurately depicting Rose Chew's biology. In late August, Chris released an episode of the upcoming Sonic Chew number 8 early, titled Rage Against the Garbage. He created three separate versions of this episode, one labeled TVMA, another labeled TV14, and a third labeled... But when they were still alive and had their wits about him, his parents had plunged... They were alive and... Well for quite a long time and they saw and obviously they knew about it because they were saying you know take personal stuff out why would you got it but they didn't do more this was a recipe for disaster then he's basically indirectly saying uh, that he if he didn't draw a comic of his sexual fantasies he would have raped somebody he, that's what he was saying without straight up saying it could you interpret it any other way uh TVY7. This was due to the graphically sexual nature of the story. The comic begins with Sonic Chew and Rose Chew talking directly to the audience, addressing the sexual content they are about to witness, and assuring the reader that it is being done for educational purposes, and that they are both consenting adults. This mature story starts with the aforementioned lewd acts, before being interrupted by Chris giving long-winded explanations of their anatomies, complete with diagrams. Once the the fuck is going on this is absolute lunacy this is straight up lunacy the scene finally ends rose chu decides to go on the internet where she discovers a website called four cent garbage a stand-in for 4chan and ed she is horrified to discover the drawing of her and she starts to formulate a plan for how to counteract them she first takes naked pictures of herself and posts them to the website, mirroring Chris's earlier attempt. Much like that event though, this does not work, and she and Sonic Chew travel to the 4 Cent Garbage headquarters in order to get them taken down. Upon their arrival, the hedgehogs take the elevator up to the top- Dude, this is- I- I mean, I didn't follow it this closely at all, so to find out some of this shit is like, what the fuck? It shouldn't have even gotten to the point where he was going to say, well, if I didn't do these drawings, I may have done something stupid like sexually assault somebody. I'll take a minor step back and say he was insinuating he would have sexually assaulted her. It shouldn't have even have gotten to that point if he had parents that were worth a shit. I mean, I know his dad sadly passed away and his mom sadly has dementia. We know how that horror story ended. But when they were there and well and their, they had their brains about them, you don't do anything. But obviously they were fucked up too, because look how they lived. Hoarders. Floor in order to confront the CEO. On their way, they encounter several memes that Chris presumably found on 4chan and add their commentary to them. They even take the time to attack a few 4 cent garbage employees. His father, I believe his father was a racist, of course. 
boys, as Rose Chu punches someone drawing anatomically incorrect art of her. Chris himself even shows up to assault someone making fun of his drawings. When the crew finally reached the top floor, they were confronted by 4 Cent Garbage's CEO, Jason Kendrick Howell. The was he ha what the fuck is Despite going on Despite their plan there? for him to take down the drawings, Jason doesn't listen, as Chris portrays him as a soulless nihilist with no morals whatsoever. As they leave, Jason hurls a pickle at Rose Chew. This sends her into a fit of blinding rage. What the fuck is going? Why is there a guy who looks like those, those evil dudes in Resident Evil throwing a pickle? What the fuck is going on? I... Uh, okay. As she furiously strips nude and throws herself at Jason, beating him nearly to death. However, she steps away just before the killing blow, letting him live to troll another day. In the epilogue, Rose Chu gathers together all of the comic's other female characters in order to do a nude photo shoot to stand in solidarity against the trolls. I, I, I'm sorry, I had to send out a text there real quick. I, I just need to hear that again. Despite their plan for him to take down the drawings, Jason doesn't listen, as Chris portrays him as a soulless nihilist with no morals whatsoever. As they leave, Jason hurls a pickle at Rose Chew. This sends her into a fit of blinding rage, as she furiously strips nude and throws herself at Jason, beating... So whoever the fuck that is throws a pickle at Rose Chew and Rose Chew goes, you know what? I'm so angry. It's time to whip out the titties. Well, it makes sense. Yeah, I know him nearly to death. However, she steps away just before the killing blow, letting him live to troll another day. In the epilogue, Rose Chu gathers together all of the comic's other female characters in order to do a nude photo shoot to stand in solidarity against the trolls. It's here where Chris introduces a new character named Zapina, a 14-year-old girl who asks if she can model for the pictures. Rose Chu turns her down, though. No, we're going to finish this at this point, son. We're 41 minutes in. Saying that quote-unquote, quote, dumb laws would prevent it. As time progressed, Chris posted more and more vlogs about his feud with Encyclopedia Dramatica, and his YouTube channel became his primary outlet for talking to the internet. Just a couple days after his initial two releases, he posted another vlog celebrating his victory over ED, as the website had to go down throughout the day. Chris believed that this was his doing, as he had rallied his fans to conquer his enemies. In reality, however, the website had been going down due to unprecedented levels of traffic, as more and more people began flooding in to read about Chris's antics. And as interest grew, trolls began devising new ways to mess with Chris, just to see how he would react. An early example of these more elaborate pranking attempts came a little later in August, when someone calling themselves JK Productions messaged Chris, telling him that he was working on a Sonic Chew video game. Chris, being an avid gamer, excitedly gave his seal of approval to the project. Over the following weeks, he even posted a few vlogs to his YouTube channel detailing his involvement with the game. And he fall right into the troll's trap. Stating that he was hard at work writing the storyline. This troll was short-lived, as on September 5th, 2008, JK Productions decided to cancel the project, posting on their blog that Nintendo and Sega had issued them a cease and desist. As one last bit of fun at Chris's expense, they pretended to redesign his character to be more copyright safe. Sonic Chu became Reginald the Anteal, with Rose Chu becoming his flamboyantly gay partner, a clear mockery at Chris Chan's homophobia. Chris himself was reimagined as a large-chested, scantily-clad woman wearing a pickle necklace. Unsurprisingly- <laughs> What the fuck is going on? I just- I can't even keep up with this. What? <laughs> 
Unfortunately, the Sonic 2 creator was not pleased, and quickly responded by cutting ties with the project, and encouraged his fans to contact Nintendo and Sega to make an official Sonic 2 game. Even though this was not the most elaborate trolling effort, it was used to test the waters for future endeavors. These unscrupulous internet users were rapidly learning Chris's weaknesses, and figuring out ways to exploit them for their own entertainment. Another one of these early sagas involved a group of trolls attempting to trick him into believing that English football commentator Jimmy Hill was trying to sell a ripoff of Sonic Chew in the UK. They went to great lengths to convince him of this, creating fake ads for Sonic Chew toys and putting bootleg copies of his DVD on store shelves. They later upped the ante by claiming that Jimmy Hill was developing his very own Sonic Chew animated series, in which the titular character was gay and his parents were Jimmy Hill and Mary. What is the thing about that dude before, the evil dude, throwing a pickle at that female Sonic 2 character and, and she getting so angry that, you know, I just have to get naked now. Like, what? My girlfriend and I are watching her stream. It got so turned out we started doing it. Stuck my hand down her pants. I feel like I was feeding a horse. Uh, what? Harry Walsh. The cartoon's villain was a giant robot, the design of a giant robot with big ass nipples, which was based on Chris himself. <laughs> Yo, man. He, do those shoot rockets? Just as they hoped, Chris believed every word of this lie. He addressed it in multiple update vlogs, most notably one where he laid out all the evidence to prove he was the original creator of Sonic Chew and not Jimmy Hill. The trolls had a good laugh at this and did not push the Jimmy Hill saga much further. They had learned what they wanted to know, which is that there wasn't a limit to what Chris would believe and this opened the door to many new possibilities. At around the same time period as the Jimmy Hill saga, a new group of trolls decided to prey on Chris's desire for a sweetheart by creating a fake woman for him to fall in love with. To be clear, this wasn't the first time Chris had been catfished. A few months prior, a man by the name of Joshua Martinez, who had met Chris in speech therapy class, attracted Chris's attention under the guise of the fake alias Lori Lopez. Chris and Lori He even had people in real life trolling him. That's pretty crazy, man. That's pretty crazy. Talked for a while, but ultimately things fizzled out and nothing substantial came from it. With the groundwork laid, the new tricksters invented Blanca Weiss, a name obviously poking fun at Chris's desire to only date white women. In Blanca's first email to Chris, she expressed her admiration for Sonic Chew and revealed that she also enjoyed making comics. Blanca sent him her own original character, Jigliami, a combination of the Pokemon Jigglypuff and Amy Rose from Sonic. They also sent Chris a picture of a woman jumping in the air and holding a guitar a supposed image of the fictitious sweetheart. Chris was instantly impressed. <laughs> Let me translate that. Chris jerked off feverishly to a woman holding a guitar for about 20 minutes. I've been trying to look at cards with your stream in the background, but I just can't. Also, I to try to relax your anus. Yes. Try to relax your anus. Oh, the camera's on. What car are you looking at now? I got to go piss, by the way, so you can tell me when I get back. I, gotta, I drank an entire thing of ahas. I may get more coffee. I may need coffee, too, so I'll be right back. And I don't have to brew it. It's already made. Why am I talking so much? Fuck birds. Try to relax your anus.
bringing up a... That was stupid of me. Bringing up a fucking coffee without a lid. Whatever. I did kind of fall down a I hole. I fell down a fucking hit hole! Yeah, I like Pacific as if you're going to do a minivan. Now they're all-wheel drive. I would get all-wheel drive. It's just even better in the rain. Like, even if it doesn't snow where you are, I'm not sure where you are, Nabil. It's just still better to have all-wheel drive. Anyway. No, I had um, I have the pre-made Starbucks unsweetened shit. And added both Jigliami and Blanca as characters in Sonic Chew number no. seven, published August twentieth, two thousand eight. This issue also included a scene of Chris being trapped in a time void, which he did in response to criticism, saying that the story focused too much on him and not Sonic Chew. Chris and Blanca began emailing frequently after this, with the gullible man rapidly trying to escalate their relationship. Only a few days after their first meeting, Chris was already. Oh, yeah, I have all wheel drive with my car, too. You have to. I'm from New York, too. I'm eating a uh, protein bar. And it's mediocre. Oh, God, then you have to. I believe you, Nabil. And like I said, even if you live in an area where it just rains, it's still better to have all-wheel drive. He oversharing about his personal life and attempting to learn more about Blanca's. Also, while I am thinking about it, I wanted to ask you about how you feel about porn and your humble opinion. How do you feel about porn? Um, I'm going to give more, um, obvious dating advice. Sorry. Don't ever be like, oh, I want to know your opinion about porn. It's not a good idea. Honestly, and confidentially between you and me, the I see Rocky the Road official Protein videos bar, from it's companies such as Adam and Eve. Not solely as a turn-on, but as a good education of what may be done during the act. I also appreciate it more as a virgin because it allows me to create a better idea for when I actually do it for my first time. Mid-twenties version? Hmm. And obviously, I have seen a fair share in my adult years. In oh, don't worry, I had no doubt about that, Chris. In these emails, Chris also fabricated a few details about his life, such as saying he had made up with Megan and was at peace with Encyclopedia Dramatica. The latter of these two claims was immediately disproven later in the correspondence, as he went on an angry tirade about their continued misrepresentation of Rose Chu's gender. I just wanted to let you know that I have finally got use for the ED page being there, so I am able to tolerate its existence. The major thing about that page that really grinds... Yeah, and it's not... You can't just go into, it. oh, he's autistic. There's many people I know that are autistic and on various parts of the scale that don't do anything like this. Chris Chan definitely had other issues. As my gears is all the lewd, slanderous, parodied images of my Rosa Chu. She is all woman. She was born with and still has her God-given vagina and both ovaries. The trolls had Chris right where they wanted him, controlling his anger with the ED page and his love life with Blanca. Soon enough, though, the snafu artist behind Chris's fictional girlfriend... And the thing was, severely trolling Chris, it was even worse is severely trolling Chris was effort effortless. Like, you could be <laughs> you could be married with kids and, like, just type him hello and be like, hi, I'm a woman with breasts. Oh, I'm going to make a love song about you and jerk off to you 37 signs times and probably drink my own semen. It's like the fucking... It's like the easy button of trolling at Staples. Like, just... That was easy. 
Like, you don't have to do anything. It's just like, it's like adding water to one of those little, remember those capsules? I don't know if some of you are my age. You used to sell these fucking capsules. You put them in water and a sponge would, like, the capsule would disintegrate and some sponge creature would drop out. That's like all you had to do with Chris. Just a little modicum of effort and it just grew into something exponential. That's actually Boogie. Yeah, Boogie should do voice acting. Yo, Boogie, if you're out there, I'm not kidding, dude. Do voice acting would get a wrench thrown in their plans when a new troll named Lord Silly Nipples created Hold on. Hold. Why? It, it just, it doesn't stop. It doesn't fucking stop. Is it you? She is all woman. She was born with and still has her God-given Everyone has the right, if this coffee spills on any of my devices here, after what I went through the other day, you have the right to roast the living shit out of me if this spills. You could roast this for me for the... I am giving the trolls full fucking permission to dis destroy me if this spills. Vagina and both ovaries. The trolls had Chris right where they wanted him, controlling his anger with the ED page and his love life with Blanca. Soon enough, though, the snafu artists behind Chris's fictional girlfriend would get a wrench thrown in their plans when a new troll named Lord Silly Nipples... Where is that time code? We I need that right now. I, I can't even wait. I need where is notepad. Ah, 4813. I never thought... Hey, Rich, do you think in 2022, I've known Art for years. He's been a very cool dude with me. I actually work with him. Um, that you would think you'd hear Art say, Lord, silly nipples? No, but here we are, and I, he said it. All right, we'll get that after. You needed a MySpace page for. Of course it is. Art just said, Lord, silly nipples with a straight face. I would be an idiot not to put it on the soundboard. Uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have had those extra lozenges. Why did you? I told you before not to let me have them, and you did nothing. Not a fucking. Not a fucking thing. <laughs> ah! For Blanca, without their involvement, he added Chris and quickly appealed to his well-known desperation for intimacy, asking him if he would like to exchange new. Ah, uh, MySpace. That's how you could tell the age of this MySpace. A great place to find some friends or that special someone. Communicate with each other. Draw draw uh, cartoons of you fingering them and fucking them. Because that made that just makes the women love you. Jesus Christ. Nudes. Unfortunately, Chris did not see through the lie and sent multiple naked pictures of himself to the Of course he did. Of course he did. Imposter of his already fake girl. Oh God, yeah, my status was dying. I mean, I remember still using it in like 2009, but it was dying for a while. Friend, this led to September 11th, 2008, when Lord. Wait, hold on, Bobby, you got Lord Silly Nipples? Yes, yeah, send it to Rich at ReviewTechUSA.com. Stop it. How'd you get it? Or I love you. Silly Nipples dumped Chris's nudes onto the internet and changed the profile picture of his Blanca MySpace. <laughs> no, no, no. This is insane. Page to one of a black man wearing a pickle costume. Oh, yeah, I remember GeoCities. Yeah, GeoCities. Addressing the nudes. Sadly admitting that the woman he had believed to be his first. Solid Crusader. I don't know. Uh, YouTube has been weird. YouTube has been very strange, by the way. I could say that. His real girlfriend had been, in fact, a troll. He decided this gave him free reign to claim Jigliami as his own character, as presumably he liked her too much to write her out of the comic entirely. The original troll... Jigliami. <sighs> trolls behind Blanca began scrambling as they were not yet gross. ready to give up their roots. Not enjoyable. They managed to talk it's Chris food, into though, partaking so in a Skype call with them, where a female troll named Nurse Icky Chan played the role of Blanca. This was enough to once... That should go it off like a dating app for the one woman I think who's in this chat right now. And this is what you see there. 
as their main profile picture. It's like block. Oh, man. Once again convinced Chris of the character's validity, and he posted another video proclaiming that she was real after all. This would not be the last. <laughs> what is with that? What is with the grandma bra on that face? What? I, I never seen this before. I think I've actually, like sent this picture to my friend Sean back in like 20 and 2010. <laughs> oh man, I should have just fucking played Elden Souls. Elden Souls. Elden Ring. Freudian. Legitimate Freudian slip. But I just... Like, you know this had to pass by his parents' eyes when they were both alive and well. You know he probably got Barb's bra on. Barb! He's sending nudes with your bra on, Barb, while he's wearing a, a sonnet shoe pendant. Is it time for the breaks yet, Barb? Is this enough? Is this enough, Barb? He's wearing your bra, Barb, with a Sonichu pendant, an imaginary character he made up. Is it time? Just curious, just wondering. Last time, nude images of Chris were posted online. Only a few days later, trolls managed to figure out the password to his YouTube, MySpace, Facebook, and email accounts. It was at this point that they found oh more photos meant for Blanca, including one of Chris wearing his mother's underwear. I was right, and I didn't even know that. and another of his genitals with Sonic Chew drawn on them. Same age as me. Chris Chan's parents at this point were literally like, you ever seen that fucking meme with the dog? Where they're like, the dog is like, this is fine. They were looking at this going, hey, this is fine. I've got balls of steel. After the loss of his first, he drew his imaginary Sonic the Hedgehog character on his dick. That which probably means he's well hung. God bless. I couldn't draw a Black Ops 4 rectangle on my penis. First YouTube channel, Chris was forced to create a new one. Lord Silly Nipples was still. Lord Silly Nipples. I am Lord Silly Nipples. You're going to tremble in my wrath, sister. Once these areolas get a hold of you, it's never going to stop. 
still not done with his shenanigans either, as later that month he emailed Sonic Chew's creator under the guise of Chris's high school gal pal Tiffany oh, Robinson, no. asking for a copy of his Yep, I'm on TV DVD. Upon receiving it, he quickly uploaded all the contents to the internet, although it really only consisted of old home movies and family photos. Among these was a picture of Barbara taking a nap. This image inspired trolls to give her the nickname Snorlax, as they believe she resembled the Pokemon of the same name. Oh Jesus, that's cruel. The apparent success of these early trolling sagas began to attract the attention of more and more internet users, who were curious to see if catfishing this man really was as easy as it seemed. It absolutely was. Like I said, it was the easy, you got the easy button from Staples and that was trolling Chris Chan. Like, like, Joe Biden at this point could have trolled, trolled, trolled Chris Chan back then. He wouldn't even remember what the hell he did, but he could have trolled him. Try to relax your anus. Try to relax, Try to your, relax anus. your anus. That sounds like a name I would have made up at that point, too. I'm just Lord Silly Nipples. <laughs> He had Sada Chew tattooed on his dick and was wearing his mom's bra. Is it time for the fucking breaks yet, Barb? Maybe just a, that's what I'm saying. It, 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 but nothing. It was like, but then like the dad at that point, because they haven't talked about it yet, and Art seems to have done a really good job on this, so I'm sure his dad at that point was just like, yeah, don't show our house to show that we're hoarders because the house that we may get our house fucking condemned. That's all they were worried about. Oh my God! Limewire mishaps to be like I did it not of sexual relations, but I, I whoever went to ifreeclub.com did it really. That was an actual ad. Throughout September, Chris began talking to several more people pretending the to be women Thank you very who were much. interested in him. The first of these girls was named Sarah Jackson, who first approached Chris by telling him that her autistic little sister Rose was a big fan of Sonic Chew. Chris did show some affection towards her, but ultimately nothing came up. Oh, no shit. The creator of Sarah would later decide to kill her off by saying that she was hit by a truck, an event which Chris had very little of an emotional response to. In this era, there was also Jesse Ruddy, another catfish who Chris what is going on showed here? a bit of interest in, but never went very far with and she would reveal herself to be a troll only about a month later as it wasn't going anywhere. The most successful of these spiritual successors to Blanca was a spin-off account that went by the name Sarah McKenzie, an Australian girl who used the screen name Panda Halo. She was somehow able to convince Chris... No, they were in their own heads with issues, it seems. I mean, it, I'm a, this is... I don't know. I don't... I wasn't one of the many flies on their walls at their house. Because you're sure they had those motherfuckers. The garbage doesn't seem like it was taken out there much. But uh, they don't seem like they were well put together even when they were both alive and before his mom had dementia. You know, it's just... Chris to break things off with Blanca in order to build a relationship with her. On September 24th, Chris made a video announcing his new girlfriend to his fans. He didn't reveal her name, but did sing a cover of Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up. For his, he what? His new flame. She was able to use Chris's deep sexual uh. urges to her advantage, often steering their conversations in risque directions. Chris, of course, was deep sexual urges is an understatement. More than happy to oblige, as he would describe Chris Changa's Sweet Home Alabama. I know the song, but I don't know. His masturbation habits to her in explicit detail. As Oh, that 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 women just love that. I am a I'm a chronic masturbator. Want to go out to dinner? <laughs> uh, that's what made him. I mean, I, something should have been done to step step in place before he went down the fucking cliff. He went down, but. It was just like the shit that you got out of him was incredible. And it was, I mean, he made it on Opie and Anthony, man. You know, not on there, but they knew of him and that he said he wanted to drink his own semen. Fuck me. God. As well as videos of him in the act, which of course made their way onto the internet. As Chris was... 
Yeah, sometimes it's a topic, but let's keep it real. Do you think there was any kind of Christmas? She was like, oh, nice weather today. Um, hi, I'm Chris Chan. I just beat off. You know he wasn't slowly. Like, there wasn't a natural flow to. Uh... Getting closer to his fictitious sweethearts, he began corresponding with a person named Vivian Gee. Mrs. Gee was another troll, as she had previously been responsible for a series of full narrated Sonic Chew audiobooks on YouTube. Despite how she had previously been making fun of him, here she seemed genuinely concerned for his well-being, as he was sucked deeper into the vortex of lies created by 4chan and ED, sending Chris multiple emails begging him to see the truth of what was going on, and to make efforts to... And it's also what adds to the recipe for disaster uh, with Chris is that he wasn't work. He was isolated. No friends. His parents were, like I said, even before anything happened to them, were on literally seemingly like a, on another planet, not doing anything to help him, and he just had nothing but time. And it be, combined with his mental issues, with the fact that he's autistic. Again, I'm not a mental health professional. I just have common sense. You have time, you have an entire community of people trolling him, and he's living in a fantasy land to begin with, with no one getting in the way to get him help. What else could have happened? I'm surprised, thank God, no one got hurt. Minus, unfortunately, what happened, we all know what happened. But I'm saying like that, he even said, like, if I didn't do this drawing of you, Performing a sexual act in the drawing, I may have actually done something stupid in real life. So think about how all of the, it was like the perfect storm for this, you know? Improve his real life. There are no fans of Sonichu. Sonichu is a bastardization of properties that belong to other people. Your entire comic is pretty much a bastardization of your life. Sonichu will never get anywhere. Quit your dreams of Sonichu, the game, the comic, merchandise, everything now. And if you still feel a need to be creative, make something completely original. Don't base it off your life, don't base it off stuff that exists, just make something completely new. You have never tried when it comes to women, never. You can't just sit around and wait for it to happen. You have to make it happen. If you can't muster up the courage to do that, then you will never get a wife, let alone a girlfriend. If you feel you can't do any of this, get a therapist, a real one. Ask your parents to send you to one. Do something about your life instead of bitch and draw comics about it. Other than Megan, this was the hardest and- Kinda, you know, but it, it, that kinda was a tough love. She is right. 100%. Tough love way, but it was kind of like a person being like, "Yo, man, I, I was just trolling you, but you need help, dude. <laughs> like, you like this is not good, healthy." Anyone had ever tried to show Chris the error of his ways? While harsh, it clearly and plainly laid out everything Chris needed to do to get his life back on track. Perhaps if he had followed her advice, this story would have ended here. But you didn't. But that's where a sound-minded adults, obviously it was someone, unfortunately there was no one to step in because he couldn't do it himself. He's not capable of it. But he didn't have the brakes. No one was there to put the brakes on. And... But alas, it was too late. Chris was already caught in a tangled web of lies by the trolls. As Chris's multiple fake relationships grew more complicated, his love life would soon receive another curveball. At the end of his eventful September, he wasn't a love life, but I, I get message Blanca over Skype telling her about a dream he had, claiming a voice spoke to him saying the name of his true uh. sweetheart, and that the name was Blanca Weiss. Taking it as a sign from God, Chris broke up with Sarah and returned to Blanca, declaring his undying love for her. It should be known that Chris and Sarah remained on friendly terms after their breakup, 
as she even created a fan site called Sonic Chew Fans later in October, which Chris would post on semi-frequently. As a symbol of his commitment to Blanca, Chris sent her a package containing his Sonic Chew medallion, as well as a handwritten letter about his love for her. The contents of this package were quick Oh, God. quickly posted on Encyclopedia Dramatica. It should have become obvious to Chris that Blanca was a troll, but he simply couldn't see the truth of the matter, as on October 9th he posted a video insisting that Blanca was legitimate, and that the package had simply been intercepted by detractors. He also claimed that Blanca had, at some point, reclaimed the package and mailed his Sonic 2 medallion back to him. He proudly showed off his prized possession, complete with the markings proving that it was the original. The trolls were not fooled, as they knew that he did not really get the medallion back, and this was merely a replica he made to save face. This video ends with a strange, out-of-place segment where Chris states that he had been sponsored by Sony, followed by a short ad for the game Little Big Planet. This section came out of nowhere and had nothing to do with the rest of the video other than showing that he was back on good terms with the gaming giants after the competition debacle. In response, what? Did he really? To the whole ordeal, Chris posted a short comic story on October 15th, 2008. This episode was a preview for Sonic 2 number 10, though bear in mind, at this point, he had not even fully released Sonic 2 number 8 yet. The episode follows Chris in the form of Chris Chan Sonic 2, conducting a one man assault on the four cent garbage. Max Metal, how are you? And this, yeah, it is unco it is uncomfortable because it's just so weird that this this is all real. Big building, you know. Upon arrival, Little Big Planet is well, good. So is that new Kirby game. I bought it, and it's good. Is quickly trapped, and his medallion is stolen, which reverts him back into his human form. But the trolls are shocked to learn that they gain no power from the accessory, as Chris reveals that the true source of his power is actually his high school ring. This was an obvious attempt to convince God. the trolls that he did not care about losing his medallion, despite the fact that just a couple days prior, he had tried to convince them that they had never stolen it in the first place. This is when one of the original trolls behind Blanca, named Icarus69, posted another video with Chris's medallion where he destroys it in multiple different ways. These included stabbing it, making it perform coitus with a pickle, dunking it into the fermented cucumber jar, smashing it with a hammer, setting it on fire, did he call it the fermented cucumber fire? <laughs> and finally urinating on it to extinguish the flames. And with this finale, the character of Blanca Weiss had served her purpose. She broke up with Chris, which resulted in him posting a video delivering the bad news to the world. In this vlog, he seemed absolutely heartbroken, as he could not even muster the energy to stand up off the couch. He cited Icarus 69's video as one of the main reasons for the breakup, stating the now iconic line, the pickle man tricked me again. Chris. I, this is kind of sad, but holy fuck. <laughs> we got Lord Silly Nipples. We got the pickle man. I. Oh, God. I don't know. Chris went on to blame Encyclopedia Dramatica for the collapse of his relationship, angrily asking his fans to track down the person who stole his package for Blanca so he could bring them to justice. Over the course of just a couple months, Chris had experienced some of the worst that the internet had to offer. Despite being a catfish, Blanca was the closest thing he ever had to a real relationship, so the loss hurt him deeply. It was arguably the lowest point Chris had ever reached. Unfortunately, Where did my Biden stream go? What do you mean? To your Biden stream? Fortunately for him, though, the worst was yet to come. All right, Abby. <sighs> A lot of cards. Mm -hmm. But situation, but strategically, situationally, that's why I want to do some shipping breakups. So are people able to bring their own decks into this game? Uh, yeah. Multiple people have this well, decks mostly, in one round? Yeah, uh, actually, yeah. Yeah, I, found, I figured out a rule where, like, you know, you can have two compete, you can have one deck playing against the other. That's another, that's a set of rules I came up with and mm -hmm. add to this. You would think that they would get mixed up too much. Yeah. 
Right. Are there any places around Charlottesville that uh, where you can play this game with people? Like in, yeah, in like yeah, the DN Games one. If uh, oh, okay, yeah, if you can get back in there. Yeah, it is all before the stuff happened where he, where Chris Chan raped his mother. Yeah. All right. The Black Moon. Um, on the Black Moon with Jacoba, it's some autism. Oh, autism me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, never heard of that one. That's something. That's yeah, I made up that me. This has got a weird disfigured face, but it's in, but yeah. Plays a lot of trade cards in this game. What? Are we a lot of trade cards? Um uh, yeah, I yeah, I do play so, but most of, but you don't have randomized booster packs or anything like that. Well, like during a game. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. So now you can actually add to that Yeah, I'll put and a then, ship. And at the point you can also reconnect with the other the art was like, please make this fucking stop. Please make it stop. Start card ships. I got you. I see. I see. So I'll put a ship here. Yep. Facing east. And then I will place. I, I, I have this crazy card. Skylander Chris Chan. Oh, and yeah. That works out very, very nicely. Yes. Because what that gives me is two points. Which is just what I need. To win the game. The final, the final. Best cam's fun. All of these fucking bot accounts. Like, hey, a, a streamer with more than like 600 viewers. Let me see if we can get them to watch porn. <laughs> and steal their credit card information. By the way, I'm sure that virtually every single one of you here have the common sense to know this, but do not ever click those bullshit links. If you do not see a check mark next to a Review Tech USA account on YouTube, at least, I'll never get a check mark on Twitter. I'm not salty about that at all. Go fuck yourself, Jack. Um. Uh, yeah, don't click it and report it. If it if it's not me, if you don't see the check mark mark next to me, they're trying to like scam you. Uh, not only were they trolling him, they were actively warping his reality, which is called gaslight. And yeah, they and they look where look where it ended. You know, uh, I'm having Liam Keely crawl and didn't realize. It's up short. Jolly, yeah, it's good, dude. This kind of has like that kind of taste too, and it's just water with bubbles, and I don't know. It, it's not artificially flavored. They, I heard they essence it. Like, whatever the fuck that means. Speaking of which, I got to piss again. So just for uh, continuities, nah, is that the right word? Whatever. I'm going to end this stream because this stream is about a different topic. I know some people mix everything together, but I don't have a highlighter yet. That's something where I'm going to have someone eventually do highlights on here. So I'm going to end this stream and come back. Probably come back. Probably is the key word and play some Elden Ring. So I'm going to play it anyway. So I may probably will do it on stream. So if you want to come back for that, I'll see you then. If not, thank you for supporting the show, guys. I appreciate it all. And yes, this kind of seltzer is very good. I'll be back probably.